Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Paul Sun Young Lee here. Welcome to Fun Boxing Sundays, episode 30. First thing I want to do is make sure that everyone can hear me. Hopefully, that's happening here. Everyone can see me. Everyone can hear me. Here we are, ready to go. Um, yeah, on the verge of uh, Lunar New Year. Sehebok, mani pato seo to everybody out there. I'm glad you could join me here today. Got a really special episode planned. Um, this has been a long journey. It's been a fun journey. I'm glad you're all here. And uh, yeah, we got a bunch of people already uh, on the chats. I can see right here. Uh, I'm very excited. We've got some great um, uh, prizes to give away. I hope you like them. Um, and I've also got uh, some really fun things to unbox. I have my first ever uh, uh, sort of comparison uh, spite review coming up, um, which will be a little bit of fun out there. But first of all, uh, can everybody hear me? <laughs> is everything good? Yes, I think everything is good. I'm just checking. I'm always paranoid that my tech isn't going to work out because it's something I forget. But I think this time I was finally able to get everything because I'm a professional YouTuber. Um, okay, so before we begin, I want to say hello to everybody out here. Uh, I am in Vancouver. You're all at home. But a big shout out to the Bitter Brigade who is joining me every Sunday. This journey has been made that much more special, and that much more fun because you're all here. Uh, we've got Joe Chufuk in the basement, Bitter Troll, Tommy K. Everybody, shut up, Tommy. Uh, we've also got Vanessa C, Melissa K. Hey, hey, Sean P, my brother from another mother, down in Los Angeles. We've got Chris Christie in the basement. John Carmen is here, as well as a Bitter Troll. We've also got, who we got here? Uh, Gary Lau is in the basement with us. Our friend from Oakland, Robert Donatello. Hello, how are you, my friend? I'm glad you're here. Joe Galati, as always, my rock, he is here as well. We have, uh, let's see, going through this list, um, Chris Christie is here, Mel Dade. Hey, Mel, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, we've got Jason Lowe, Red 2 is standing by. How are you, my friend? Uh, Aaron S. is here, as is Hip Hoptimus Prime. I hope you're doing well, my friend Nigel. We've got Darren Lai, the CEO of the Canadian... Uh, uh, the Rebel Legion. Uh, I always want to say the Imperial Legion. I, I get my, my signals crossed up, but hey, welcome. We got Steve Three, shit spackled Muppet, Muppet Fart, uh, is in the house. My brother Steve, how are you, my friend? Um, and uh, let's see. We've got Daniel Sirtles in the basement. D Sirtle, how's it going, Daniel? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're uh, enjoying your Sunday. I don't know if you're at work or not. Yannick Freve is in the basement. Uh, allo tout le monde. Bonjour, mon ami. Uh, bienvenue. Hope you're doing well. Christopher Colvin, the uh, droid maker extraordinaire, is with us this Sunday, as is Bearded Builds, right on Monstar 0305. Justin, how are you? Uh, Colin Hollis, the best neighbor in the world, is out there uh, with us, out here with us today. We've got Bad Wolf Media uh, here tonight. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. And uh, Angela Lee, my Nuna, my older sister, is here. Kenny C3. Kenny, how are you, my friend? I hope you're doing well out in New Jersey. Um, I sent you an email back, and uh, yeah, I, I hope you're doing really well, my friend. Um, Peter Cunnington is with us. Welcome. Uh, we also have, that's a new name, so that's really cool. Welcome, Peter. Um, uh, Mark Velasquez is with us. I shouldn't be here. I know halfway through this, I'm going to order two new Mandalorian figures from Sideshow. Yeah, if anything, uh, this is this is a show that really is about um, spreading that joy about collectibles and, uh, you know, enabling each other because, like, that's what collectors do is enable each other and show you some really cool things that are out there. And I've got some really cool things that I'm super excited to share with all of you today. Um, we've got Brandy Woods from Montreal all the way here. Hello, Brandy. How are you? She's a fantastic artist, for those of you who don't know. Uh, Flyzone21 is here. Yes, uh, I too cannot wait for the armor unboxing. And what a coinky dink to have uh, this particular figure here, because I don't know if you've if all of you have seen the latest episode of the Book of Boba Fett, but uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't, you might want to plug your ears. Okay, for those of you who have seen it, you know, the armor shows up, so that's so super cool. Now you can unplug your ears for those of you who aren't there. Uh, Jinpei05, hello, my friend. How are you? I hope you're doing well. We've got Eldos2000, Saint Soldier is here. Uh, welcome, as well as Chi of Steel, Louis Levitz, the Northern Nerdcast is here with us, as is uh, just passing by. Hello, Thomas D, Gabe Jones. Uh, Patrick Really Velasquez is here. Uh, oh, Va Really Vasquez, not Velasquez. 
really Vasquez. Sorry, I jumped. I have a friend named uh, Andy Velasquez. So he's uh, that, that's in my head. So I apologize for mispronouncing your name, but I hope I fixed that. We've got the Global Health Scientist Institute from Southern New Mexico with us today. I love reading that out. Love reading that name out loud. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got Mike Wan is in the house today. We have... Uh, yes, the Dirty 30, Joshua Loretto, Frank de Los Angeles is here as well. Susie Ketchup, ooh, ooh, that's either a really, really bad coincidence or very, very clever troll. Uh, either way, welcome. We've got uh, Multisani is here with us. Um, Fanboy Cantina is here. Hey, hey. This is great. Yoko McCann is in the basement with us, as is Ashley Brienzo. Um, Carrie Fanti. <clears throat> yes, there's still time. Micronesian Tem. Um, Captain Crispy is here. Uh, Gung Ho Cho. Hey, happy Lunar New Year, too. Welcome to the channel. Um, and, uh, yeah, where are my pants scarf? Um, yeah, uh, if, if those of you who watch who do the cross-platform thing, which is great and I love it, uh, as you know, toying around Kevin Wong, he's got his own YouTube channel. And on Fridays, we do the Book of Boba Tea with Yoko McCann, Ernie, I still know his last name, but his his handle is The Falling Fett. Sorry, The Fall M Fett. And uh, we do a recap of uh, Book of Boba Fett on Fridays. And uh, this last episode that we had, Kevin was really cold. And we noticed that Kevin and I were both wearing uh, the same colored hoodie and the same black, uh, a black baseball cap, and he had a gray scarf. And I'm in Vancouver, and I don't really need a scarf, but I didn't have something. So the only thing gray I had was a pair of sweatpants that I put around my neck for a, for a makeshift foulard, as it were. So the Irish Rover is here, as is Peter Michael Redma Redmayne. Uh, and uh, that's very cool. We got so many. Sue Toffee is here. Happy Lunar New Year. Dominic Rossito. Um, I love this. I love this. I'm saying some new names. And hey, you know, for, for those of you members who are out there too who are wondering, hey, I thought the chats were just for the uh, for the members. Um, we had a we had a bit of a town hall meeting, uh, my last AMA, and uh, I, I ran it by the members, and the majority of the members said it was pretty cool to open up the chats again on a trial basis, at least, uh, to get some more interaction happening on the chats. Uh, either way, uh, I really appreciate that, and for the members who who conceded those that uh, that conceded that concession. Anyways, um, it was very kind of them to, to, to let me open up the chats again um, to, to just subscribers, actually. I've, I've had it for subscribers and um, just to spur some more conversation that's, that's happening and to see if we can get a little bump in the, the number of people who are viewing the live stream. So thank you so much for all of that. And uh, it's really nice to see, uh, again, how supportive and how wonderful the chats are. And this is all about community building. It's about geeky goodness. It's about lifting each other up and supporting each other. And so that's, that's what I hope and is usually reflected in the chats, and I'm very, very happy about that. Um, let me see. Do we, have we said hello to everybody? Have I caught up? Nope. Tom, 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 Tom is in the basement with us. I love reading that. About Future is here as well. Welcome. Uh, we also, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Oh, Susie Ketchup, it is a coincidence, which is good. Uh, people who know me, no, I, I can't stand Ketchup. I'm sorry. I just, I can't get behind that, but I'm loving it. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm getting trolled by my sons right now. They are texting me pictures of the finger gate, the circle game. I'm not falling for that. Uh, David V is here in the house. We also have Wildcard is in the basement, as is Michael Burke. Uh, and yeah, we're getting there. Oh my gosh. Almost caught up. Almost caught up. Almost caught up. Almost there. Jason Garza, I think I've mentioned you. Um... Nice. Here we go. We've got Wildcard, Angela, the Irish Rover, Stephen, uh, Charles Stevens is in the house. Hello, Charles. Good to see you. Oh, Kevin finally made it right on. Better late than never, right, Kev? Right? Huh? Huh? Laugh. And uh, Nola, uh, Nola Uprul 315 is here, as is David Smith. So welcome, everybody. Um, okay. I, you know, I suddenly realized, too, I'm, I'm in a hotel apartment here in Vancouver. And where I'm set up, I'm actually close to the door. And I wonder if my neighbors think I'm either the loudest, most foulest person in the world who just won't shut up. But I I'm going to consciously try to keep my voice down a little bit because I think I have a feeling my voice echoes down the hallway. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> who's that? Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. 
to my uh, my well, this is not my Kiki basement, but this is my Kiki surrogate basement. It's slowly being transformed uh, into another Kiki basement, which is cool because the number of stuff that I've gotten uh, over the last few, few weeks has been. Um, well, let's just say epic. So, uh, Anna, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's is what happens when, when I'm forced to isolate. Uh, after, you know, you catch COVID and you're away from home and you're just kind of by yourself. So, uh, a little bit of therapy, uh, retail therapy was happening there. Uh, a little bit of getting stuff ready for research is out there as well. And, um, yeah, this is, so this is, this is the byproduct. Uh, of all that stuff is I, I want to make sure I'm loaded for bear so that we're ready to rock and roll when it comes time for fun, so fun boxing Sundays. And to that end, today I went on a little bit of a, a field trip and I went out to Toy Traders, the best toy store in the world, in my opinion. And I got um, a chance to visit with, the, the again, the incredible staff out there, an incredible owner who's become a good friend of mine. His name is Matthew, Matthew Purdy. It's also, everybody, Matthew's birthday. So let's wish Matthew a happy birthday. He came all the way out from Langley to pick me up on his birthday, take me to his store. Uh, they treat me like gold there. The staff there is awesome. Dan, uh, uh, Sam, and Will, you guys are rock stars. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting the rest of, of the staff and getting a chat with them because um, you guys, the vibe is real. And the passion and the care that you guys show is absolutely uh, spectacular. And it, and it really, you feel that. You feel that. And so I love that. Um, so thank you so much uh, for, for your friendship and for like just the awesome conversations. Um, and so, yeah, I went to, to Tory Traders, uh, came back. Matthew drove me back as well. And that uh, just kind of shows you the type of person he is. And that's reflected in his business, his personal life. I got to meet his lovely daughter. Um, she, Absolutely beautiful, beautiful little girl. I've got to meet his eldest stepson and his wife, Kim. So big shout out to that family. Uh, you're doing it right. Thanks for making me feel at home while I'm away from home. So I just wanted to point that out to all of, uh, to, to point that out to all everybody here. Uh, this is, and you can see from the comments, uh, this is a great, this is a great community. The Bitter Brigade, you guys always step it. You, you all, sorry, going to try to non-genderize it. You all totally step up and this is what I love about this group and building it up. Um, so it, it, it goes a long way for the new people who are here. Thank you for putting up with my meanderings, my tangents, I go off. But basically what we do on Fun Boxing Sundays is I open up a geeky collectible. Uh, I usually struggle with the little bits, but that's fine. That's part of the fun. Uh, I do a half-ass review and we chat. So we talk. There's some fantastic conversations that are happening in the chat feature. Um, everybody knows this is a place of positivity, of support, of building each other up in celebration and, and mutual respect. Uh, and I, I love that. And so Sundays is, is my favorite day of the week just because we get to do this together. Uh, and to that end, there's also a little game that we kind of play. Um, just because we've done 30 episodes of this now, and you'll notice there's a few phrases that I might use. And so uh, some of the eagle-eyed viewers, um, uh, channel members as well, uh, channel members, friends, members of the community have noticed that. And we create a little drinking game. And so I'm going to share with you some of the rules of the drinking game uh, as made up uh, from uh, Mike Juan and uh, Melissa Kay. And uh, we're the ones that sort of spearheaded this and, and got these things down. So I'm just going to, hopefully this works. Let's see if I, that works. There we go. Here we go. And here are, the, here are the rules of the drinking game. Now, the drinking game doesn't have to involve alcohol. It could be anything. It could be water. It could be juice. It could be coffee. It could be tea. It can be whatever. It's not alcohol specific, although the alcohol does make things a little bit more slippery and fun. Um, so the rules are basically, you take a drink of your drink, whatever it may be, when you hear these certain phrases, one, shut up, Tommy. That's directly related to Tommy K, who is a, a fantastic neighbor and a friend of mine too. And it's, a, it's an inside joke. We tell him to shut up whenever he mentions something because he's super smart and it's fun to, to, to chirp him. Uh, another phrase that I use is for those of you who don't know, I've used that several times already, so take a sip. Um, the phrase, nothing can be easy. During the course of unboxings, I'm not gonna lie, I struggle sometimes uh, with opening things and things don't go my way. I have very, very many nemeses, uh, small batteries, uh, scotch tape, um, small magnets, anything small and tiny that I can manipulate, I have difficulty with. So uh, I have a catchphrase, nothing can be easy. So there is that. Um, 
My wife, Anna, she's a moderator in this, and you'll see her because whenever I get burned so badly, it's usually from her. Whenever she burns me in the comments, take a drink. If my sons, Miles or Noah, get teased by me or they tease me, take a drink. Uh, if I ever talk about the resale value or ruining the resale value of a collectible, take a drink. If I mention the instructions, ooh, I love instructions, take a drink. Uh, if I use profanity, this is one I'm going to try to be better at because I'm realizing that uh, a lot of younger people are watching this or this is being broadcast to places where young ears are and the last thing I want to do is drop an F-bomb. Although, if I do get salty near the end, really, these videos aren't for kids. These, these, are, these are for a mature audience, but uh, I'm sure they've heard worse from their parents, but I'm still trying to keep that uh, a little bit safer. Um, also, if I find a dent in a box and I say it's okay, but it's pretty clear that it's not okay. Take a drink. Um, and also if, and this is going to happen, if I got to take a bio break, finish your drink and get another one because those are the things that, that happen <laughs> on a regular basis in this. Uh, so those are the rules. We've got uh, a number of, I see some more people joining in, uh, old friends, which is great. Uh, I saw, where is it? Uh, Rebecca Martello is here. Welcome, Rebecca. It's always lovely to see your name and your avatar. Matthew Purdy, there he is. The birthday boy is right there. Uh, they're playing it on the 100-inch screen TV over at Toy Traders right now. Uh, big shout out to the staff out, out there again. Dan, Will, Sam, thank you so much for all your help. They're able to help me find, secure a couple of Funko Pops that were harder to get for some of my friends uh, in the cast of Avatar The Last Airbender. That's right. I'm out here shooting that right now. Um, and so uh, I was, you know, it, it was, um, I think Dan did all the dirty work, got on his knees and dug the bottom shelf and found me a Zuko. So I'm, I'm super pumped about that. Um, but uh, here we go. Uh, let's, let's continue on. We've got, oh, say to Lunar, how are you? I hope you're doing well. And thank you so much for your kind words about my work on Kim's Convenience. Um, before we continue as well, we've got a special guest with us. Last week, we were lucky enough to have uh, Terry Smith who is the Pose Master General for Sideshow Collectibles. Great collector, great geek, great nerd, great uh, friend. Um, and this week, I'm really, really happy to have uh, my special guest here. Uh, this is not his first time on the show, but the, 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 the response to him has been great. And uh, as his participation grows, so does the evolution of who he is. Please welcome to this channel um, my co-host, Little Boba. Oh, no, it didn't work. Little Boba. Fail. I thought I'd set that up. I'd set that up and it's not working. Let's go. It's not working. Oh, fail. Well, it's Little Boba. We've got some technical difficulties happening here and I'm really, really trying to get this unlocked here. And uh, no, he's not. It is not unlocking. All right. Well, Little Boba's not working right now. We got a technical difficulty. It was working in the text, but he's going to be here. If we can get the fallingest bounty hunter in the galaxy to join us, I think that'll be a big win. <laughs> it's yes, again. Somehow it doesn't surprise me that it was a fail. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to open up my drink right now. And because I feel, because nothing can be easy, a drink to you. Tonight's event is not sponsored by White Claw, um, but I will be consuming White Claw for tonight. Now, this is the 30th episode, which means for 30 weeks, we've had uh, a fun boxing Sunday. And something that I really, and truly, and to be totally serious here, what I love is um, how much the, this, this community has grown. And uh, it, it's been really nice to connect with all of you out there and geek out and nerd out with all of you. So I want to make today's episode uh, super special. And to that end, I've got some giveaways. Uh, my friend Yoko McCann uh, has a friend in, with, with Penguin Books. And she sent me uh, a few copies of this. It is the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia from DK Publishing. And the cool thing about this book is it has... The first ever appearance in print of a certain character. That's right, I don't have it bookmarked, but I think I, I have the page number memorized. Um, you think I, a, a, prof a professional would have had it done, but there's a little character by the name of, that's right, Cassian Andor. Cassian, who of course premiered in the 
in the, the spectacular movie Rogue One. No, of course, I'm talking about Captain Carson Teva, played by yours truly. Uh, I'm going to be giving away, I've got four copies of this book, and I will be personally autographing and personalizing this page and sending this book out to four uh, members. Now, here's, here's the rub. Here's the rub. This is one of the perks of being a member on the channel. So this contest is going to be open to members only. So you have to have a, a paid membership uh, to be able to be eligible to enter this giveaway. Um, and um, yeah, this is... This is spectacular. If you want to be a member, there are two different levels. Uh, you can look it up. It's uh, $2.99 for Lieutenant and I think $4.99 for the Commander version uh, level. Um, but uh, you'll see there's there's a lot of extra content coming out your way. It's a good perk to be a member is what I'm saying. And for the subscribers who are out there, worry not. There will be something for you as well. But uh, for these ones, I'm going to be, uh, for the character encyclopedias, I am going to be, boom, let's see there you go. This is this is for you. So again, this is a character encyclopedia that we'll have for a giveaway. You're going to have to um, uh, you're gonna have to work for it though. There's gonna be a little bit of uh, trivia that's gonna be involved there, and it's gonna be timed. So that's cool. Uh, this is uh, of course my lovely wife. Can I win? Sadly, no. That is a conflict of interest, and uh, we have one of these at home, baby. We have one of these at home. Also. For those of you eagle-eyed viewers out there, I'm looking at you, Tommy, because you seem to be able to find a way to f see things that I, I don't mean to get seen. Uh, you'll notice I have here a stack of these pretty nifty Topps trading cards. Now, these were sent to me from Topps. Uh, these are blank Captain Carson Teva Topps cards, and I will be autographing and personalizing these for some luckily winners uh, as well for tonight's episode. And uh, yeah, so you have that to look forward to. All right, and now um, I'm trying to see if I can get, let me, maybe I can do something here. If I can switch this over, say, let's, let's try and see if we can say hello to little Boba. Oh, finally, I've been waiting here in the shadows. Do you, have you got it all sorted out yet, Paul? Have you? Uh, yeah, sorry, little Boba. Uh, technical difficulties, but hey, you're used to waiting in the shadows, right? Right? Kind of like, you know, falling into a sarlacc pit by accident. Oh, I knew that was going to start. You're always so cheap going with that. But I'm just here to let you know I'm keeping my eye out on you. Well, that, that's good, little Boba. That's that's really good. I can always count on your support for this. Um, are you excited about watching uh, the unboxing for for um, for the armor for today's episode? I am. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I really enjoyed last week's episode of The Book of Boba Fett, which is named after me. Yeah, hey, little fact. Um, how did it make you feel knowing that I had more screen time in a show that was named after you than you actually did? That's really cheap, Paul. So cheap. Cheap for you. I know. I couldn't help it. But hey, let, let, let's continue on here. Let's continue on. Let's move on. Uh, so we've got, let me just bring this out here. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Today, we're going to be unboxing this first of all. It is, of course, the Hot Toys exclusive 1-6 scale uh, the Armorer uh, from The Mandalorian. And now from the book of Boba Fett. Uh, she's here. She's bad. This is going to be super exciting. I'm really, really looking forward to unboxing her. And uh, later on, uh, for those of you who might recall, a few weeks ago, uh, I purchased this item here. Now, this is a hero collectible of the Iron Man Mark I uh, arc reactor. And I was super pumped to have opened this. And, um, I, and it's a beautiful skull. It is really, really great. Uh, Looks fantastic, really, really well constructed. The only thing that really sort of burned me, uh, much like little Bobo got burned when he got knocked into the Sarlacc pit by accident by a blind guy. Oh, here we go again. You're always going on about how I accidentally fell into a hole. Yeah, I did. Uh, I got burned much in the way little Boba did because this doesn't light up. Uh, which you would think was a, it would be a slam dunk 
for something that looks this cool and for this price point, let's be fair, that it would light up. And so out of a, a, a bit of um, spite, I went online and I actually saw if we could do better, if we could do better than this. And I was actually able to track down a couple of different options uh, to this hero collectible, which is, which is great. It's a stack model, but for the price point, you expect lights and sound. Uh, I found this. Again, this is the Iron Man Mark. I believe this is a 40, 40, uh, 85 arc reactor. Uh, and this is from Hot Toys. And uh, it's a different design. We're going to open this up and see. It lights up, apparently. And it, I think it has sound. So we're going to do a direct comparison to that. And not only that, I actually went and I saw something on Amazon. And it was just a few dollars more. Uh, this here, we're going to unbox this. This is another version of the ARC-1 reactor. Um, it was $30 more than the Heroes Collectible one. And it came with an acrylic case. And it lights up. And it has sound. So we're going we're gonna to be doing the direct comparison for all of those later on. So let's get to it. Let's get to people that are sick and tired of hearing me speak. Let's get to opening up this beauty box set here. We've got right here, Hot Toys exclusive. Uh, first of all, I mean, the box is stunning. Look at that. This picture right here is, uh, it's not the actual, this is the actual toy. This is the figure, one six scale, 12 inches long, it's about a foot. Uh, and already the level of detail is stunning. It's got the standard cigar band. Here's another picture of uh, the figure that's inside, right? And uh, on the back, you've got your regular, uh, which is what I love. They have the, the, the credits to who sculpted it, how it was built, who's involved in it, and the prerequisite warning of don't swallow the small parts. Uh, as well, they've got uh, a little, and these are newish. It's Disney branded with the holographic sticker, so you're not getting a counterfeit, right? So let's open this up. I also like this Hot Toys exclusive um, sticker label that's going to be on, going to be on here because it's like, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out what makes it so, ex is it exclusive to Hot Toys? Or is this a Hot Toys exclusive for a certain company? Like Sideshow, for example. Sideshow, they have their exclusives. Uh, so we've got that. Oh my gosh, you know what? I think I'm missing, have I been missing? I've been missing super stickers, haven't I? Super stickers and super chats. Um, this is something that I need to get better at while I catch myself, blah, 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 talking. I think... Uh, somebody had a super chat earlier on uh, that I missed. Uh, forgive me. Um, oh, my gosh. Here it is. My buddy, Kevin. Sorry. Thank you so much. I got a $5 super chat from Kevin. Anna, I'm sorry. should be added to the drinking game. Ooh, that's a great idea, Kev. That is a great idea. You don't, you don't have many of them, but the ones you do have are aces. Cheers to you, pal. Um, and thank you so much for that really generous super chat. I got to say, I, I'm really loving some of the uh, conversations we're having with Yoko and Ernie, uh, not only on uh, the stream, but behind the scenes as well. Um, it's really cool when you can connect with collector friends and sort of nerd out together. And so that's, it's really, I feel very thankful for our friendship. So thank you so much for that, Kevin. Um, we also have a super chat, uh, super sticker from Colleen Scott. And uh, yeah, it is... Thank you so much for that. It's a, the opening box. We're, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, Ecamm does something weird. It does an actual like written description of what what it what's what the sticker is instead of just showing the sticker. But thank you, Colleen. And uh, for those of you who don't know, any of the super chats or the super stickers, all that goes right back into the channel so I can bring up this, this really cool content for all of you. So um, thank you so much for that, Kevin and Colleen, for your generosity. And uh, we got another super chat here from Brian Schoenfeld, $2. Thank you so much. Who is an actor you would want to be a in a scene with in Star Wars? Um, I am honestly just so pumped to be in Star Wars. It doesn't matter who it is because uh, it is such a, uh, like a crazy special experience. And I'm insanely grateful for that. Um, and the, 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 the people that I've met... And the, the directors I've had a chance to work with. I mean, uh, the first ever work that I did in the States was directed by Carl Weathers. Like, how cool is that? 
And then to be able to work with um, Peyton Reed and, uh, and then Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, these are huge names, <laughs> in my opinion, right? It's like this little little nobody from Canada getting to work with these, these huge icons in Hollywood and really well-respected and well-crafted artists uh, in the States and on a Star Wars. It's just like, stick a fork in me. I'm done. Um, so really, it, 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 I'm, not, I'm not picky. I'll work with, I, I, I will be happy to work with anybody and everybody. And uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a Star Wars. So <laughs> that's what I get to work on. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard, it, she is sweet. Um, Vanessa, you're saying that she, she seems so sweet. She is very sweet. She's very, um, obviously, she's very competent. And she's, uh, she's an actress director because she's been through it. Like her dad, like the, her, her family lineage. I mean, she was raised in the industry, basically. And her dad was a child actor who became an you know, Oscar-winning director. And she's grown up with all those experiences. And herself being an actor um, has really informed how she treats other performers. And um, yeah, she was very, she took care of us, which was awesome. And she's very collaborative and obviously... Uh, a great artist. So that's, that is, I cannot say enough about my very, very brief experience of working with that, uh, Bryce, uh, because yeah, she's a real deal. She's a real deal. And everybody's seen that. I'm, I'm glad she's getting her too. But let's get back to this unboxing here. I've got, uh, we've got this armorer here who is spectacular. Let's open up this box right now. Uh, and again, this is what I love about, uh, these hot toys is, the inserts are spectacular. Look at this. this is another beautiful. She's got the tools, uh, a little lingot of, of Beskar. Um, and uh, yeah, this is it. All right, you've got our standard clamshell right here. Uh, looks like a lot of really cool accessories that we have. Um, some extra pairs of hands. You've got, uh, what's that? Uh, her tongs, the big, uh, the, her big hammer. Um, yeah, these are, there's Beskar here, other instruments for her forge. This looks like, oh, look, it's a, it's a, it's a Beskar chess piece, chess plate, which is awesome. And I think this is, uh, this is, is this that, that flask that she has? You know what? The instructions will let us know. I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove this clamshell from the bottom of the box and Guess what is here? Get your drinks ready. We got instructions. Yes. I love them. Love instructions because they tell us what things are. Uh, and we've got something else on the bottom here. On the bottom is, uh, look, cardboard. Ooh, what's that? And it's got tape. My nemesis. So uh, this is, I'm going to... Cut that away there. Yeah, this is this has been a recurring. Oh, that's a lot of tape. This has been a recurring uh, event for a lot of hot toys recently. The last couple have come with these uh, cardboard, almost dioramas here, and you can see it's like a, a doorway. And once you, oh, it's a chest case. <gasps> there you go. So that. Gorgeous, and this is a really thick carded stock. This isn't your your cheapo sort of run of the mill uh, carded stock here. This is her tool chest, which has opened up, and you've got a really cool detailed uh, sort of uh, photograph of the tools. And so, if you ever want to do a recreation, a, pre a prop replica of it, here you go. You've got some really nice shots here. Um, now, it's interesting. I saw somebody else there talking about uh, wanting to know the armorer's backstory. And there's some really cool, super cool theories that are happening right now regarding her backstory and what it really means and who she is. Um, there's a, a YouTube video out there. I can't. What, what's the name of the dude? Uh, that's okay. Terry Smith sent it to me. I, I was already watching it. A bunch of people have sent it to me. And basically, it is... Um, it goes back to the Clone Wars days because the Moon of Concordia is a very, very uh, particular place uh, because for those of you who want to do the deep cuts into it, know that Mandalore was, uh, when it was taken over by um, 
uh, Bo-Katan's sister, Satine, they were a pacifist government, and they basically banished all the warriors, the, the Mandalorians who were still into, like, uh, violence and, and the warrior way, they banished them to the moon of Concordia, and that was the Death Watch. Now, the Death Watch, those are the dudes, uh, that's the clan that basically um, saved Din Djarin. And so uh, the, the armor mentions it, talks about how, uh, in that case, it was the... Um, uh, that sect that, you know, had the helmets on and believed that they were spared during the Night of a Thousand Tears when the, the Empire came in and just basically glassed the entire planet of Mandalore. Um, anyways, the link is basically, if you watch those old episodes, Bo-Katan was part of the Death Watch, and she ended up leaving them when Darth Maul beat Pre Vizsla and took the Darksaber. Uh, and so that's when Bo-Katan bailed from the Death Watch and sort of branched off on her own. And then you have uh, Maul, who's taken over. Now, Bo-Katan had a very close friend who's in the Death Watch. And uh, the name escapes me now, but she had a helmet with little horns on it. And so the theory is the armor is this character who remained loyal to Maul because he had the Darksaber. But there's little clues as well about the actual passing of the Darksaber and who actually it still belongs to. Because even though it was gifted to Bo-Katan, if you go back far enough, uh, to Maul, to uh, Pre Vizsla, to all that, uh, Moff Gideon even is along that, um, they've all failed spectacularly uh, in, in, their, in their attempts to be leader or ruler. And uh, the theory is, it's because none of them were the rightfully gained the Darksaber. That in fact, if you go back far enough, the dark saber, and this is reaching, but I think it's pretty cool. The dark saber actually does belong to Django Fett, in terms of who actually had it. And because Django Fett, when he was killed, he was not in possession of the actual dark saber. It shouldn't. It didn't get passed over to Mace Windu, and so it really does belong to Django Fett still. And uh, who's a complete, like, perfect copy of Django Fett? Boba. So yeah, Bubba. It, it, looking at you, buddy, this is like, it, you know, no pressure, but this is looking like it's big boy time for you. At last, oh no, it belongs to me. I'm the one who's going to lead Mandalore back to its glory. Yeah, or you're going to fall into another hole by accident. But hey, who knows? There's two more episodes left the Book of Boba Fett, and we're really excited about that. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this unboxing. So here we have it. Um, now, it was also said that when she opened it in the Book of Boba Fett, there was a special signet of the Mythosaur that was different from the ones that, that we've been have been associated with the Mandalorians uh, in, this, in the, the Mandalorian. Um, and uh, this, this sigil... Uh, that was apparently in the Book of Boba Fett for uh, her toolkit was actually from um, uh, the same one uh, that is on Boba Fett's armor. So that's a deep cut. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty... Uh, I, I think that's a pretty cool deep cut as well. Um, okay, I, I, I think in my rambling ons, I, I might have totally missed. Here's a super chat from Brian Schoenfeld too. Who is an actor you would want to see with? Oh no, we did that one. We did that one. I told you any of them, all of them. I am greedy. Uh, I saw another one come up here. Um, ah, here we go. Alex Martin. Thank you so much. $20. Wow. Congrats on becoming Uncle Iroh. 100% perfect casting. I expect you to look like the three Chris completely shredded during book three. Thank you. Absolutely no pressure whatsoever, but challenge accepted. Uh, I keep telling everybody, if we can get to season three, that's, that'd be amazing. Uh, those are my hopes, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, uh, I think, but that's the plan is to, to get to season three and, uh, and beyond. Uh, and uh, to that end, you know, CGI abs, baby. CGI abs. Put on a green shirt. Yeah, we can do it. Or we can do a deep fake on, on a jacked stunt double. I think that'll be... We're living in the future, people. You never know. But thank you so much for that lovely, lovely super chat. Um, and again, thanks for supporting the channel, man. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, let's get back to the uh, unboxing. Okay, so we've got this great, really thick card stocked... Um, uh, treasure, treasure chest. Jeez, work chest. 
for the armor. And now let's open up. Open this up here. Whoa! Okay, so we have, of course, the armor in here. She's got, we've got the little serial killer type plastic bag over the head to protect from scratching, but these are so detailed. When they're helmeted, it, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not as disturbing. It's when they have the real faces that it is. Uh, we've got little arm gloves. We have, ooh, ooh, oh my gee. Take a look at that. It's actual hair. Look at that detail. This is, uh, that's stunning. That is stunning. Wow. We've got a super chat here from the Milk Product MK2. $5, thank you so much. Are there any of the background Mandalorians from season one you'd want to get a sideshow or Hot Toys figure? Love your work, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, um, one of the ones, I've got the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, and he's super cool. Uh, they have, I mean, really, uh, right now that's out, they've got the uh, Death Watch uh, Mandalorian uh, figures, and they're actually, it's, I, I've done, an, I did an unboxing of one because I got that a like a few months ago and um there's a it's a variant on the thighs because uh they were in two separate screenshots like the one that is that is that picks up din uh apparently there's a bit of a discrepancy in the thigh armor uh and that uh the uh it, it changes uh it's different in two different shots so like it's the whole debate of well is it a different mandalorian it's the same one what's up with the change in the armor uh, and so the Hedger bets, I mean, Hot Toys has included both both interchangeable sets, so you, it can can be whichever one you want. But that also leads itself into being able to uh, army build and have different uh, different Mandalorians from Death Watch if you want to. See, tape, come on, nothing can be easy, mother. Okay, careful, careful. Ah, oh, there we go. Honestly, scotch tape. Really? Really? Okay. Is Peter Dinklage under the helmet? No. No. It's a Merkin. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 Steve. Ha, ha, ha. Where's that band button? This is... Yeah, okay. There we go. So here she is. And again, she, there's a there's a protective uh, tape, uh, not tape, plastic wrapping right here to protect the leather belt, which should be, oh, it's tape too? Come on. There we go. Oh no. So yeah, some of the tape pulled, I don't know if you can see that. Some of the tape pulled some of the hair, a little bit of the hair off. Little bit of hair. Not happy with that, but again, this is uh, this is great. And she's got as well some of the plastic in for the wrist guards. You can just pull that pull that out. Gauntlets, hands. Okay, so here she is. This is, as always, stunning. I want to draw your attention to her, to this uh, apron that she has. This is, this is like leather. It's pleather. Uh, and it is, look at the detail there. It is exquisitely done. Right down to the stitching on the back. Right there. Look at that. That's unexpected. Um, the detail on the belt and her chest armor, which is great. I mean, the articulation of her arms to, uh, let's see. Right 
Where's the bend at? So double double joint for the elbows. Stiff, which is great. The boot coverings as well. You've got uh, a suede-like material for the boots. My wife keeps texting me. What is it? Careful with the arms. Oh, the, the arms are single jointed. Thanks, Louis. The arms are single jointed. Thank you so much for the, okay, so I gotta be careful. Yeah, I feel, there's a weird sort of stiffness to it, which is very, uh, I'm, not, I'm not used to that for with hot toys, especially. So yeah, you can definitely feel there's no, there you go. Uh, they are ratcheted, so you can feel that there's a click, 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 which is there. There you go. There you go. Yeah, they are single. To be or not to be? Boba Fett, has any, have you removed your helmet or has anyone removed your helmet ever? Uh, well, I guess, uh, uh. You are no longer a Mandalorian. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. I, I, I'm really slow at switching back and forth because I gotta do it manually. So uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not as quick. I'm, I'm trying to do four different things at once uh, and trying to get my digs in that little boba. Uh, but I'm trying to get this fixed up here. Uh, so let's let's get back to okay. I'm gonna do this here because it's a little bit a little bit easier. Um, the uh, the arm articulation, like Louis po pointed out, and thankfully so much, it's uh, they are single single jointed. Usually, I'm, you're used to a double one, uh, and they are it's they're ratcheted, so it's like a click 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 to get them to the different positions. Um, the difference between her and all, some of the other armored six inch figures, like for example, a stormtrooper, like the Jedi Patrol stormtrooper have, when they have armor on the, the, the shoulder bells and the shoulders, the biceps and the forearms, uh, and the, the chest armor, a lot of times it's hard to get that range of motion for them. Uh, she only has the uh, the Mando chest plates here, uh, and it's it's all you can see. It moves, It's it is, yeah, there we go. It is flexible, it moves, which is cool. Um, the detail on her helmet is, and the paint app is super cool. And that's the thing, like, look, she's got, she's got horns. These are, these are definitely like mall horns. Come on, hide my face, there we go. Hide my face, mall horns there. Um. And uh, yeah, so she got the boot coverings. I'm gonna switch over to the other cam again. Right. There, you can see from the tread, uh, this is a hard plastic on the treads, which is interesting. And uh, there's screwed plates that are, that are on there, which I don't really, I don't remember seeing Maybe I'll check some of the other Hot Toys figures that I have. Uh, the pant material, again, right down to the piping and the stitching. It's, it looks like a zipper, but we all know there are no zippers in Star Wars. That, that's a lie. But uh, you can see there they've got, the again, the, the stitching down both sides. Um, it's interesting, the, the range of motion uh, looks to be just at the hip. There's no, oh crap. Uh, there's no, yeah, it's just at the hip. Yeah, so the, the flexibility, there might be some rotational movement uh, for the upper part, like around the chest. But um, yeah, this is, uh, that's interesting. That is very interesting because I wonder if it would be, how difficult it would be to have, to recreate the, her squatting position as she's meditating uh, with her weapons. And one of them being, of course, let's look at that. She's got her tongs to grab the Beskar. Super long. Let's do this. Let's pull these out. Ah, this is the big, 
the scoop for hammer. This we got standard stand, crotch grabber. Oh, I think this is a torch. Yes, this is this is like a welding torch that she uses to uh, weld the signet onto the Mandalorian's things and uh, Beskar chest plate and. Uh, <laughs> so my kids play this game we cut it's a circle game it's basically if you do one of these and it's below your waist and you look in the circle you get punched so they've been texting me photographs of that uh oh here's sorry a little piece of beskar as well uh and so this i thought was when it was in a box i thought it was one of these and i thought ah oh, how how did they do that but she has uh, four different hands, so she's got the, that one's close, trigger fingers, and then to be able to grab the different implements. Oh, is that interesting? So she has, and this is interesting, uh, one, two, three, three left hands, four if you count the one that's already on her, on her hand, and only two of the right hands, which is like, huh? So she's not as I, she's most definitely left-handed. That's a neat. That is a neat discovery to make, right? And now, here we go. There's a torch double as a lightsaber. Looks like it could. It looks kind of like a droid collar. Like a really extended version of it too. If you want to look at the at the, but yeah, this is most definitely the little like a uh, the little arc welder that she she uses to like put the uh, to attach the uh, signet of the mud horn onto Din's Din Djarin's, uh shoulder bell there or pauldron as some of us are saying. And then uh, here we go. Instructions and these are devastatingly thin. Aha, there you go. But they do label what each of these are, right? And uh, look at this, there's a warning. Due to the nature of the fur material on the cape, please handle the figure with care, otherwise it may be damaged. That's real fur, people. Real 100% rat fur. No, I'm just kidding, I don't know. It's probably some sort of fake, it's some sort of synthetic thing that is there. But it also tells you which hands to use to grip certain items that's the hand for the best car and that's it but you know what i don't care because i still love instructions and i'm so happy they're included here because it removes all doubt as to what what this figure is here okay so we got ah ah i'm i am here what's going on wild card is everything okay Wild card. What is it? Is it is it a discussion about a discussion about cards, perhaps? I bet it's about cards. Ah, okay. You you're talking about cards. That's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. This is this is a this this is a great figure. This is a great figure, and I'm gonna see if I can do if I can pose. Pose her, as it were. So Terry, if you're watching, look away. Just kidding. Don't look away. Don't be like that. This is, I'm going to see if I can get something. Uh, one of the lovely things that I discovered, uh, you know, after meeting Terry is just how incredibly cool it is to uh, pose these figures. And, uh, you know, Terry is a master at it because it's not just like putting them in neat positions uh, it's doing it in a way that is very, very uh, character driven, tells a story, uh, makes sense, uh, is dynamic. And uh, it's it's another form of storytelling, which I love. And I think that's great. And Terry really got me to appreciate that. Uh, we got a super chat from Super Wrecked. Captain, super, Jesus. I'm sorry, Captain Wrecked. I'm sorry. Uh, a super chat from Captain Wrecked. 
Um, shout out to Emily Swallow for her voice and Lauren Mary Kim for the fights as the armor. She was a man, Maldalorian. Uh, think she was a Maldalorian, Paul? Cheers to the Bitter Brigade. Yeah, I, I'm thinking more and more, and I'm thinking it's like the signs were always there because the Mandalorians that were loyal, in the cartoon at least, in the Clone Wars, that were loyal to Maul was, uh, had, had horns put on their heads. There's a Black Series figure of a Mandalorian Super Commando, and that was a Death Watch one, and they've got horns, got horns. So that's, that's really, um, and I think, you know what, if that is true, if what's going on, because it goes on, he goes on, uh, this YouTuber, I gotta find his name, uh, Terry, you, uh, you actually sent me a link to this dude. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, and I am going to look it up um, this YouTuber's name is, here we go, The Star Wars Fanatic. So check it out, The Star Wars Fanatic. It's his latest video. Um, and he speaks about some of the verbal clues that are being dropped story-wise. Uh, because she, the, the armor, when she's telling the story of the Night of a Thousand Tears and the history of the Black Saber... There's a lot in the background where she talks about the mythosaur and how, uh, you know, the, the Chosen One will basically uh, return with a mythosaur and unite all of Mandalore. Uh, and, um, you know, there's there's only one mythosaur left, apparently, and that mythosaur is on Tatooine. And so the speculation, long story short, is it's not Din Djarin who's going to reunite Mandalore. It's going to be Boba because he's moving away from being uh, he's moving away from from uh, being a bounty hunter uh, and he he wants to be a leader and he's slowly building up the crime family in Tatooine and he's using respect and honor to do that. And the, the theory is he is uh, doing that. He's going to get he's going to get the dark saber somehow. And he's going to be the one who rides in on a mythosaur. And I've talked about this too, when he says, Oh, I've ridden on beast 10 times its size. And there were a lot of mother jokes that were there. Uh, Dad, Danny Trejo mom jokes. Uh, well, not Danny Trejo. This is his character. The, the, um, the rancor keepers character. Uh, but the whole idea is Bo is going to learn how to drive, drive, ride a mythosaur. He's going to get the dark saber. He's going to, He's going to basically um, lead the Mandalorians in becoming Mandalorians again. And the speculation is Tatooine is going to become the new Mandalore. So that's, I don't know, I think that's super cool. Um, we got another super chat super chat from Captain Wrecked. Uh, this time $2. Thank you so much. Boba is a mythosaur. He was, a ma he was Mandalore in, in the extended universe, expanded universe. Oh, okay. He is a mythosaur. So somebody's going to ride Boba to the... I'm just kidding. Um, that's cool. That's an, that's interesting. Interesting. I'll take it. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I just think in terms of the storytelling right now, if it does go that way and Boba does become... Uh, and because and so the, the, the argument or the thought was as well that... Uh, even though Boba Fett wasn't in that episode, the last episode, episode five, uh, at all, it was all about him because it is setting the, the the stage for Boba Fett being elevated to that position. So I think that's cool. And if it's true, that'll, that'll you know, uh, it, it's amazing the vitriol that has come out over this series. In my mind, it's like how spoiled and how entitled have we become that we're ragging on new Star Wars content. And it's not like this is terrible content either. This is like everybody's like, oh my god, we got we got teenagers on 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 shiny bikes and and slow chase sequences and this and that. But it's like, what a time to be a Star Wars fan because all the content that's coming out and all the stories that are being woven together. And we just gotta be patient. And I really do. And again, I'm biased because I, I'm I'm working on I've worked on the show. Uh, I worked on, I made an appearance on Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett, uh, season two of Mandalorian, you know, and I've, I've worked with these people and uh, it's, it's a dream come true for a Star Wars nerd, first of all. So it's like, I want that to continue. So stop crapping on the shows, guys, and like have faith 
that there is a really, really kick-ass plan that's happening and, and story that's, that is being told, and we just got to stick with it. So that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm holding out for. Uh, Captain Wrecked with another $2 super chat. Boba has Mythosaur on his armor. Uh, what other does? That's true. That is true, and that's the thing, and that's what they're. That's why they're calling it is that tie-in from that that Mythosaur. Um, see, let's little Boba. I'm gonna grab you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe hopefully we can we can get you over to the. What are you doing? Don't touch me! Stop! Uh, uh, you can't do anything because you got a crotch guard. Guard on. There you go. So we're talking about this symbol here, that Mythosaur symbol. Uh, of the, the skull. That one is not generally used. Uh, that, that, I know apparently that's the one that appears on the armorer's uh, chest, right? So there is, that's, that's one of the uh, interesting things about uh, the, the little visual Easter eggs or visual clues that are happening there, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm hopeful like the next two episodes, I mean, Filoni, he is direct, he's directed uh, his episode's up next. Rampant speculation as to who might show up. <laughs> but you don't know. I don't know. Uh, when I appeared in Book of Boba Fett, when I showed up to shoot that last year, uh, I thought I was shooting season three of The Mandalorian. So they have a plan. Sounds like Battlestar Galactica. The Cylons are back and they have a plan. Uh, but in this case, yeah, they, they definitely have a plan. Uh, I've, they've honestly have done so much for the Star Wars universe. In my mind, I give them the benefit of the doubt 100 times, 15 times on Sunday. You know, it's just like trust in them and stop complaining about Star Wars. This is why we can't have nice things. Right. So let's enjoy this. Uh, OK, so I've got I've got her here. Emily Swallow's character, the armorer. I've got the uh, the I've got her in that pose there where she's got the two different. And that's, that's the thing too, you can, you, there's so many subtle manipulations that you can make for it. Uh, I wonder if I can get her into that sort of, that kneeling position. I don't think she can. Uh, this is not, it's not a double jointed uh, leg. Some of the other feet figures are double jointed. So this only goes, it's a 90 degree. This is as far and she doesn't. This looks like it's it's not quite that pose. Now maybe I might be able to do a little bit more with that, uh, but you can't get her into that deep sort of like Jedi meditation. And that's the other, the other visual clue is the way she's meditating and the way she was able to tell that Din Djarin had injured himself with a dark saber. She knew it was a dark saber. We all knew she knew. Um, and so there's a question is, is there some force sensitivity as well? Was there some force sensitivity with her character because uh, she was able to see things that she hadn't seen with her eyes, right? So um, here we go. Uh, Kevin saying that apparently the uh, SH Figart's uh, armor has swappable skirt for the meditation poses. Yeah, that's cool. This one. You know, it, it, it's open at the back and because, and this is what I like about Sideshow, and not Sideshow, I do like Sideshow, but Hot Toys is the soft parts on it, the fabrics are spectacular. Uh, the flexibility that this leather skirt gives is incredible. Yes, I'm looking up the, the I am looking, I'm lifting up yet another skirt uh, for a Hot Toys figure. I'm looking at the armor's bum. Um, but yeah, it is, this is totally flexible. So it's finding that, that joint there. It's a ball joint for the hip. Uh, it would be, it'd be great to be able to pose her in that figure, in that meditative stance, but you know, I, I'll take this anyways. And I'm looking forward to creating a, another, like a diorama set of her, like beating the crap out of a group of remnant stormtroopers. So there's that. That's so. This is this is pretty. If you're on the fence about hot toys, boy, this is the wrong channel because I will say this. Uh, till today, I I love them. It's they're expensive though. Fair warning. Something has to give, and everybody who's on this channel knows 
For those of you who don't know, I've actually stopped collecting Black Series Hasbro figures uh, for a number of different reasons, but I'm, I'm allocating those resources towards procuring Hot Toys uh, figures and um, because they're spectacular. You've seen it. You can you can look and see what's there. This is it's hard. It's hard when you get a level of detail and posability and the number of accessories uh, with a figure like this. Uh, and you know what? The, the thing is too, they're easier to get, right? Black series, it, it's like, you know, Hunger Games time. If there's a if there's like a Walmart or a Walgreens or a Toys R Us or a Target exclusive, the distribution is just all over the place and it's maddening. Uh, and I've just found for my own mental health, it just made me, uh, it, it was stressful and I didn't like that. So Hot Toys, yes, there's a higher cost involved, but you're not buying as many. And, you know, uh, companies like Sideshow, they do it right. They take pre-orders and they don't oversell. It's like, and so if you got pre-order in, there will be one for you. So and that's, that's good too. I've got a super chat from the milk product. The Milk Product MK2. Thank you so much. I've been loving all the new Star Wars content. All the more excited for the new shows too. Also hoping you eventually get an animated cameo in the later Star Wars project. Oh, that's cool. Like an animated cameo. Um, like for Bad Batch Season 2? Or what's, what's another one that's out there? I think that's it. That's in the animated one that's out. Maybe a Visions? No, they have to do another round of visions. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Milk Product. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm, again, it's like, if you're a Star Wars fan, man, we got Obi-Wan coming up, right? Andor, uh, season two of the Bad Batch, uh, Ahsoka, they're making Ahsoka. Um, you know, uh, the Acolyte is coming. Um, this is, it's great. It's a great time to be a Star Wars fan. My gosh! Uh, so let's you know let's tone down the 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 let's let's tone down the the butt hurt fans. They're being mad at a story for being too slow or 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 this or that. I mean, and it's not to say that you can be critical, but let's be constructive about it because I think far too much we're, we're leaning into the whole all you do is dump on something and there's no there's no critical thought behind it. There's no uh, you know, how, how could we have, how could we have, you know, what, what were we hoping for? What did we not get and stuff instead of the whole, it feels like it's just a big dog pile. Everybody's j jumping on just the, the shit all over something. Take a drink. So that's the thing. I, I, I wish people would just be, um, more critical in their thinking instead of just parroting and, and, what they hear or read online and go, yeah, and just barf it out verbatim and not really think about, okay, well, what about that do I agree with? What about this? And it's like, you can be critical about something and, and have discussions with other people and disagree without it turning into a, shoving, a shouting match or shoving match or, or swearing at people. There's respectful discourse. And it's, you know, there, there, we've lost that art sometimes. I think we're just so busy being outraged and complaining about stuff we're not really, we've lost sight of the fact that, yeah, you know, this is an awesome time. And, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to be a Pollyanna about stuff and go, you know, sunshines and lollipops and this and that. But I'd rather be positive about something and really explore uh, fandom and, and the stuff that we're passionate about instead of just poo-pooing it and like broadcasting it as this show is garbage. Why are we watching this? Right. So let's 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 be better. Let's be better. And I know all of you out there are better. And don't need to hear, don't need to hear me uh, go on about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just like we we complain a little bit too much about stuff. I think uh, did I, I miss a? I'm, oh, here we go. Tom, 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 Tom is a member of five months. Bitter Brigade Commander. He's his quote is, "I'd be real happy with a Carson Teva Lego minifig. I'll take whatever they they come out with." Um, it's very funny. Somebody somebody mentioned to me as well. He said, "Hey, you know, like." Uh, Axe Woes, you have more screen time than he does, sort of all put together. So, and he's getting a Hot Toys figure. Are you? And all I can say is, I wish. I don't know. I have no idea. It's it's not up to me. It's up to whatever company decides to do it. Uh, I'm so flattered that people want to see a Carson Teva uh, action figure and a Carson Teva uh, like 
um, you know, Black Series figure and this and that. I'm not going to lie. I would love that myself too. Uh, but again, that's up to Hasbro. That's up to others. It's, it's above my pay grade. Um, but again, the real joy is actually being able to be in these, these things. And I'll, I'll take that any, any day. I'll take that any day. Uh, and I'm insanely uh, grateful and overjoyed by the support that I'm getting from the community as well. Um, I, you know what? We have some time. If, does anybody have any questions about uh, my, like, about for me, about being on the book of Boba Fett? Because we can open that up for sure while I'm cleaning this up and, and trying to, trying to, uh, and getting the next, the next thing ready. Uh, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Jay Ross is in the house. Jay Ross. I think I saw people asking if I could, if they wanted me to have a, they want me to have an X-Wing. I wouldn't say no to that either. Can you imagine if they did a vintage collection, just like a, a Blue Leader a General Merrick of a, an X-Wing with the little Carson Teva? That would be, that would be wizard. That would be wizard. Yeah, I know you're late, Jay, but better late than never. Uh, Steve wants a Carson Teva Hot Toys figure with real hair beard. Hold on a second. Uh, Hip Optimus Prime is asking, when last year did I film that? Uh, it was last April. And I remember that because I got my first vax in Los Angeles. Um, oh, you know what? Hold on a second. I Get your drinks ready. I got to go bathroom. Bye break time. I'll be back. Finish your drinks, everyone. Get your refills. Here we go. Sorry about that. I guess I guess I get really excited uh, when I when I do these unboxings, and it's like yeah, it's, it's I don't know, and I'm old. I'm old, so there is there is that factor too. Um, let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see. Uh, we got a. I missed. A, oh, look at that. Uh, I missed some super chats, but I'm coming, coming there. Uh, FBF. 117 was asking what was it like working with Dave Filoni on Mando season two. Awesome. It's awesome. He's awesome. It's fun. Uh, the best thing about working with Filoni is there, there's, there's a, uh, he's got a ton of stories and uh, you know, he, 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 he studied under George Lucas. And so like that's, and Dave is just so down to earth and just so he's a great storyteller, period, full stop. Great human being, great storyteller. And he's, he's fun to be around. So yeah, it was awesome uh, doing that. Um, uh, was Ming Na Wen around? No, she wasn't. Uh, when I shoot, uh, when I was shooting again, this is all. They're very, very good about uh, secrecy and security there. And so it is when it, when you're shooting your bit. The only people that are around are the people basically who might be working on the other set um, uh, because they have uh, a couple different sets they work on because they shoot different episodes at the same time. Uh, but as well as, um, yeah, it's just for security's sake. You don't, you oftentimes, you just, when you're there, you're just there uh, working on your own stuff. And then uh, other people, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you might get a chance to see somebody passing in the hallways. Um, like I got a really brief chance to see uh, uh, Deb Chow, my friend Deb. Uh, really, really briefly, because she was working on uh, she was working on Obi Wan in the same sort of studio, so that's that. So, but no, I didn't get a chance to see me. Not. Um, what was it like? What? How was it working with? Uh, I think you mean Luke, uh, Luke Deep Fake Double. Uh, his name is Max. Max uh, was great. Canadian. He's a Canadian. Uh, really, uh, super cool, super fun to work with. Very grateful to be there. I think everybody 
who's on there is grateful and happy to be on that show. Uh, so yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, here we go. We got another super chat from the milk product. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, what was it like sitting in the cockpit of an X-wing? That's gonna be like peak nerd out moment. I was honestly, I was done. I was that you can't. I mean, this is this is something that you dream about. I've dreamed about when I was like five years old, watching the movie for the first time. Right. So the the cockpit was from. Uh, Rogue One and uh, yeah the lights worked the buttons worked you know practical switches you're in full costume uh, I was in heaven I didn't want to get out I keep saying that I, I didn't want to get out so yeah um, Rebecca I did not get a chance to meet Tamura Morrison just because uh, again we were he was, if he's not in the scene you don't get a chance and he wasn't around and honestly I didn't realize we were shooting the book of Boba Fett until the wardrobe fitting. So I was pretty pumped after I did find out though, which is great. Um, John, oh yeah, you wanna know more about the penguin sticker that Dave Filoni put on his droid. He doesn't, it's not a penguin sticker. It's not, it doesn't say Pittsburgh penguins. It's not a stylized penguin, but it was like a, this little triangle because you know, the robot penguin that they had that logo for a bit. So it's a little nod to that. So it's got a little triangle with the, the penguins' colors on it. And it's very small, but it's definitely on there, which is great. Um, I'm going to go. We got another chat from Captain Rack. Thank you so much. Oh, jeez. Uh, I want to see how these shows tie in with the overarching storyline. Favroni both respect the IP. Did you have any input on your helmet markings? That's a great question. And no, I did not. Um, this was something that I think... Uh, I remember from my wardrobe fitting, it was predetermined. They wanted it to be different from the other helmets that had been established in season one that were worn by the directors. Uh, Rick, Deb, and Dave, they all had this generic sort of New Republic helmet. And I think as we, as they went, I, I believe, this is me speculating, for season two, they wanted some sort of differentiation between my character and them. And since he was a captain, they wanted to give him a different look. Uh, that was also, though, Dave, I mean... When you're when you're one of the executive producers, yeah, for sure, he gets to um, do design, and he's a you know deep Star Wars nerd, so he got his wolves on there, and that that I think you know that gray helmet, which is awesome. Uh, so there is that. Um, there you go. Oh, Michael, thank you so much. Shout out to Paul for having Din Jaren's back and letting him go in the most recent episode. Uh, I love that sentiment. Thank you so much, but uh, it wasn't my decision. It's all in the script. And I, it's, a, it's a fun point that I want to bring up because a lot of people are, are and I know the spirit in what you're saying, which is great. But there's some people who actually think that I, that these characters are kind of real and make these decisions that there isn't like a script that we're following. So when people, I, I, and that's what I love sometimes, it makes me chuckle. It's like when people complain, it's like, well, why do you do that? It's like, because the script said so. Like, why is he around? Is he everywhere? It's like, well, because the script said so. And that's part of the story. And you can explain it, which is great. But again, that revol that I think just a bit of critical thought for that. It's like, well, why is uh, this is a tweet that everyone's like, I like the guy, but, uh, you know, what, why is he everywhere in the galaxy? It's like, no, he happens to be there. His task is to patrol the Outer Rim. Tatooine is part of the Outer Rim. Uh, he's not always there, but it's not outside of the realm of possibility that he is at a given populated star system from time to time. It could be coincidence. It could be happenstance. But in the over the way they're trying to tell the story is he goes back and meets certain characters again and again, and that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, it removes some of the randomness from it, and it helps tell the story. So that's all I can say to, to when people do that. Um, and in terms of the whole, like, it's interesting, too, how people see the New Republic as just being cops. Because they're not police. The New Republic forces that are out there, and this is what people need to remember, they're still a military organization. It is not their job to help somebody with a flat tire on the side. Like, when they out, when they meet, uh, when they meet uh, the Mandalorian for the first time, what are they doing? They're doing a sweep for Imperial remnants. Like, that's literally what my character says. Uh, when he's buzzing that commercial liner, it's because uh, that's kind of like, if you think about it, 
if there was a jumbo jet and somebody in a bi- in a little airplane was flying around it, the OPP isn't going to go up with a helicopter or this or that. They're going to scramble fighter jets from the military to deal with it. And that's kind of what happens. It's like we've got a ship that's buzzing a civilian craft. You're going to send up the military. And uh, so it, it's funny, though, because everybody's equating the police. They're not really the police. Um, and what I love is as well, uh, and again, this is pure speculation on my part, because I have no idea what are the, any of the other storylines are, uh, is Carson Teva is trying to piece together what's going on. He knows that the Empire is out there and something's going on and Coruscant isn't listening. And this is all just what I'm pulling from uh, my dialogue from season two of The Mandalorian to the book of Boba Fett. Uh, He's trying to connect the dots. He's trying to figure out there's a bigger picture going on out there. Um, and so there, there is that whole aspect of, uh, and people call him a, a detective. And for sure, there are, uh, there are aspects of that being, being there. He's doing some, he's being an investigator. But it's not like he's being specifically tasked to investigate any of these things, right? So um, it, it's interesting because they're parallel sort of comparisons, but not really, they're not really compatible. Um, and so I, I think that's in terms of what Carson Teva is trying to accomplish uh, out there. Yeah, he runs in the Mando again. He recognizes the voice. Uh, there's lines of dialogue that I remember that were cut uh, and uh, um, that weren't in there. And in it too, like he pretty much he knows it's Mandalorian. Right off, like he recognizes the voice right away, and they cut some of the dialogue where he just he's like, "Oh yeah, Razor Crest, one eleven, great ship, hard to forget, beautiful lines," and so that was really cool because that sort of lets Mando know. And the brilliance of Bryce Dallas Howard is all of that information of Carson Teva knows, Mando knows, he knows, they know each other, they look at is that one look where my character goes. You know, you mind answering a few questions and I look across and then you see Mando's head turn. And at that moment, he's like, and he takes off. Right. You don't need any of that dialogue from before. That makes sense that that gets cut because so much is told in that single glance. And I love that. I love that. And uh, Bryce Dallas Howard knocks out of the park whenever it comes to those kinds of inanimate or like just silent interactions. And I think that's why her episodes do so well, especially featuring characters that have no faces. So I love that. Uh, I'm going to bounce down because I got some super chats because I'm blah, blah, blah talking. Captain Wreck, thank you so much. If you could, what would you add to your helmet? Um, If I could, I think I'd take one of the old... New Republic stars out, and I'd put in the emblem of his of his previous squadron. I think that would be a really good sort of uh, call. Because, but he because he's a man that is uh, not entrenched in his past, but is very mindful of it, and he's smart enough to know when to pick his battles. I mean, that's that's a thing. Like he knows uh, technically he shouldn't be arresting the Mandalorian, but he doesn't. Right? He knows which battles to pick. He knows. They could go and and file reports and chase the Mando, uh, but to what end? So he knows there's a bigger picture, and that's what I really admire about that character. Um, which brings me to another point I just want to point out. Uh, he, and never once does he say the word paperwork. This is a Mandela effect that is happening in real time, which is super cool because people are saying, oh, he hates paperwork. He hates paperwork. He never mentioned paperwork. He said filing reports. Different things. I know, but I, th- I think it's a really neat thing. So um, there's that. Say, thank you so much for the super chat, too. Um, here we go. Uh, Vanessa, do you have anything you do to get into the Tava mindset, such as watching an old movie for inspiration? No, you know, it, it's just... Uh, my, my prep is, again, it's, it's that script. It's looking at it. And, like, references for all the, the Westerns that I saw, I know... John uh, Favreau was he he was giving me the example of a, a New York beat cop that's been around the block and there's there's elements of that that I use but a New York beat cop he comes from a he's he's kind of in a civilized environment the the one that I look at is more of like the old Texas Rangers or the Rangers uh, in the old west where it's like uh, there was an episode of Miami Vice I remember and Willie Nelson played 
an old Texas Ranger. And uh, Don Johnson's character, Sonny, Sonny Crockett, was enamored with the whole Texas Rangers thing. And the one motto they had was, one riot, one ranger. And there was a nobility to that character that I instantly, as a kid, was drawn towards. And I loved it. I just really, really, it was just so, uh, it was brave. It was romantic in that way. It was like this guy, this, this, this way of thinking, this way of being and acting and the action involved. And so I, I can Carson Tava more to that because he's a veteran of the, of the rebellion of the war, the galactic civil war. He's on the other side. He's doing the grunt work out in the outer rim and he sees stuff that's going on and is savvy enough to realize that he doesn't have the resources for it and they, they need to get support from the systems. And again, this is all in the writing and they're fantastic. That I, Again, I cannot emphasize how fantastic that writing room is for, for those series, which is why I will give them the benefit of the doubt 15 days, you know, 15 ways and 16 ways on Sunday uh, because they've written such such subtle and such smartly crafted stories. Um, and it starts with the characters. So I'm really digging that. Uh, so for me, uh, yeah, so I, I get in that mindset too. It's like one, ra- one riot, one ranger. And they've got like very limited resources and they're stretched super thin and they're still trying to do good out there. And so I don't have anything in particular, but that's the kind of mindset, the reference that I have of a vet that is out there and is just like, um, he's very pragmatic and I love that. And he's very like, I've been, been around the block and uh, I see it. And, uh, with, with Lieutenant Reed, I love that dynamic too, because he's, he's a young Lieutenant. And, uh, in the script, if I remember correctly, his X-Wing was supposed to be this shiny new, like fresh off the line, uh, T-65 X-Wing. And, uh, you know, if you look at the screen caps, it's blue. He's got blue, blue striping on his, which is the color of the New Republic. And uh, Carson Taylor's X-Wing has the, the old school, the Red Rebellion one. So I think there's a really, really cool uh, dynamic that's sort of happening there. Um, Steve, my buddy, if your commercial cruiser is being buzzed by a starfighter, you, you, call, you call the Republic. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we've got another super chat from Fly Zone. Um, if Carson Tavik could travel to a Star Wars movie, which would it be? A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, or Return of the Jedi, or other? Um, I've always got a soft spot for uh, for Empire, just because that's my favorite. I think it would have been really uh, cool. Cool. I think as an actor, it would have been fun to, to have partake, participate in the Battle of Hoth, uh, just because it was so out there. Uh, other than that, I mean, I think the uh, the, the Battle of Endor would have been really cool to participate in as well. Um, and again, that's that's just for me, I think that would be really, that would have been cool. I don't know. I remember asking Dave if if you know which battles Carson Table was in. He's like, well, you know, it was, it was a big movement. Not everybody was involved in all of those those battles. Which I think was a subtle way of him saying, no, <laughs> you weren't in any of those. Your character wasn't in any of those. And so that's when I started joking that, oh he's mad. He's bitter because he missed out on all the big battles. You know, it's like that that uh, the warrior who's never been in a war type thing. Uh, although there, there must have been a number of different skirmishes, smaller uh, actions that he, he participated in. Um, but uh, yeah, the big ones, I don't think he was there. But I think it would have been, yeah, Jedi or, or Empire would have been great, I think. Um, and just because for, uh, you know, A New Hope, the first Death Star run, not too many pilots survived that. So if, if he'd been there, he would have been one of the ones that got exploded. Um, Captain Wreck. Thank you so much. Again, this is like the, 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 the fifth, I think, Super Chat. That's so generous, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, I can say that it is exactly what we do if someone's harassing a commercial flight. RCAF fighters on your wings, sorting you out by Podrick Atree. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And it's good to have backup from somebody who is as knowledgeable about you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Wrecked is part uh, of the the Canadian Armed Forces, and so we thank you for your service, my friend, and thank you so much for for being a voice of reason and of knowledge and of constant support. I really appreciate that. Um, here we go. We got 
I'm just, I think I'm almost catching up. Oh, thank you so much, geeks and goddesses. Let's make sure to hit the like button. Paul's fun boxing sessions are so much fun. So great to see you back on the book of Boba Fett. More Carson Teva, please, Lucasfilm. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I've stopped asking for people to subscribe and hit that like button and stuff like that. Um, just because I think we're at a point now where uh, people know, but it's nice to hear that support uh, from, from people who are watching this. And I'm slowly learning that actually likes do help support this channel in terms of the algorithm that YouTube provides. So the more likes a video gets, the more chances it has to sort of get put into the algorithm for complete strangers or people who don't, who are unaware of the channel to, to watch it. So yeah, that's super cool. Um, and thank you so much for that. Uh, here we go. Uh, Anton. He's a pilot as well. He's saying DC has a certain ring that you can't fly into unless you're a commercial jet or specific passcode or authorization. I fly in the outskirts and I have to request a separate code just to fly. And there you go. Those are the, the practicalities of, of flying. And so it, it's good to hear that confirmation from actual pilots uh, in there. Uh, uh, Brian, here we go. Brian Schoenfeld is asking, do you think when Din Djarin got on the cruiser that he wrote Economy or Economy Plus? And do you think they handed out peanuts when they reached cruising altitude? I would have loved to have seen him fly in coach. I don't think he did just because uh, he had space. Uh, I, I think that, I, I, but he's, and the thing is, it wouldn't have made sense from the fly in coach because he's a bounty hunter. He just took down this mark. He's obviously not hurting for uh, credits. And so uh, he's probably flying in, in what passes as just below first class. I don't think he's like, I need that comfort. Uh, just because, you know, you had the kid who's looking over. Um, and so he doesn't have that kind of privacy. Uh, but I, I just did love the drop down in status because he's used to having to wear... He's used to just going wherever he wants, whenever he wants, in his own ship. And it's like, you know, uh, that scene in Speed when Sandra Bullock was like, she's riding on the bus because they, they impounded her car. She's like, I miss my car. I loved my car. I miss my car. Because she's got to ride on public transit now. And that's a big, I think that's a really cool sort of look at where Din Djarin is. He just got kicked out of the covert. Um, you know, he's on his way to Tatooine. And uh, his kids looking at him and he misses Grogu and all these things. So it's a really, really lovely, again, great storytelling. Uh, so I love that. Um, here we go. Oh, thank you, uh, Moltisani. Hope we get to see Carson Teva in uh, Star Wars Ranger of the New Republic. It makes perfect sense. That'd be great. I think that show is is has been shelved, though. I don't think it's been canceled or this or that, but I think... That's, they've got so many different projects going out right now that uh, yeah they don't they're they are shelving that for now and focusing on other things, um, which is great. Hey Cynthia, happy Lunar New Year! Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us after your family supper. Sehebok mani padoseo. Happy Lunar New Year in Korean. Um, yay! And seeing this, is what I like everybody saying hi to her already. Yay! Uh, KW, thank you. Thank you so much for the shout out and saying smash that like. Uh, Christopher Colvin. Wait, here we go. There you go. Matthew. All right. Have a great, have a great birthday lunch. Uh, no, have a great birthday dinner with your lovely family and then having some cozy time with Kim. Uh, we'll see you soon, my friend. Happy birth, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, Here we go. Do I have any questions? Did Mando? Oh, that's a good. That's an interesting. Did Mando have to buy a separate ticket for his jetpack? No, because they had a shot of him walking up the gangplank with his jetpack on, which I thought was interesting. He had to check all his weapons, but not his jetpack. I don't know. I guess that wasn't uh, wasn't it. Uh, Charles, he was definitely team window open. Team window open. You could look out. It's right there. Living proof. Team window open. Uh, we've got another super chat from the milk product. Hold on. Let me just bring this up. Thank you so much. 
Uh, one more for the road, and yes, more Carson Tava. Thank you so much for that super chat. Uh, for those of you who don't know, all these generous donations from all these generous um, viewers of this live stream go straight back into the channel. They do not line my pockets. Uh, and again, I didn't not doing this channel to line my pockets. I'm doing it to bring uh, some joy and some fun content and for community building. So thank you so much for that great investment in this channel. It's, it really is truly appreciate that. And uh, thanks for the great questions and the support. Uh, Multisani is asking, when are you finishing filming uh, Avatar The Last Airbender? Can't wait to see you and Dallas Liu's dynamic. Uh, Dallas is so much fun to work with. I'm loving working with him. Uh, we've been delayed for quite a bit because of COVID. Um, the cases have just been all over the place and it's been very, very disruptive. I'm happy to say we've started again. Uh, I myself caught COVID two weeks ago. And so, yeah, because of me, we had to delay production. Um, and so yesterday was our first day back after a while. And it was like a really, really hard but fun day. Uh, I'm excited for everybody to see what we're doing, what we're building out here. I think it'll be worth the wait. That being said, I have no idea when we're going to be ending uh, shooting. Uh, it's very nebulous, but I know, like, I'm here in Vancouver until the end of May. And so if, if that point puts a, uh, paints a picture in terms of uh, when I'm finishing, yeah, I would say in another, like, five months. So thanks for the question. Um, yes, this is, see, I'm, I, I, this just dawned on me, too, like... Make sure Andrew has pointed out that Din Jaren is team window open. Oh, he's gonna hear it. Somebody, somebody's gonna come up with a meme, which is which is fantastic. Um, here we go. Raymond Lunkus, uh, Linkus. Hi, happy Lunar New Year! Happy Lunar New Year to you. Welcome to the channel. And thank you so much. Uh, yeah, here we go. Ah, uh, oh, Devesh. That's a good question. Did I ever get into Mando's ship? Uh, I saw the, um, when I visited the set in season one, I actually saw the gangplank and it, uh, actually that's the first time I ever saw Grogu. Um, and that was for a set visit back, oh my gosh, back in 2019, February 2019 when I saw it. So yeah, it was really, really cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Growing it out. Growing it out. And this is not... I mean, it's it's cut for Avatar, but this is not the look. And I think everybody's confusing the fact that I'm growing stuff out and, oh, your beard and stuff looks awesome. This is not the look at all for Iroh, which is when you see it, you will understand that because it is spectacular. Uh, and this is not anywhere close to it. So this is to help aid in the look, but this is not the look. But I appreciate all the compliments I'm getting from people, but I want to set the record straight. Whatever people are imagining, it's going to be a hundred times better. You know, hundred percent guarantee, going to be a hundred percent better. So, get you excited. Get you excited. Uh, Aaron's asking, did I get a new camera? I'm looking crispy. No, but you know what I did get? I got these funky lights that change color. Uh, it's getting really kind of plain in here, and I've got a really boring background, so I got these lights that sort of change. So there's a bit of a subtle color change. I'd love to be able to put a backdrop in, but this picture is gigantic and it's got like 15 different anchor French French cleats on it. And so to line it up and to take it off would be a nightmare. And so I'm still in search of like a tapestry or something that I can put up there behind me so it doesn't look as boring. Uh, but also I don't want to do a virtual background because then it's like part of your head disappears and it's really sort of disconcerting. Uh, anyways, um, but thank you. Uh, here we go. Steve is great. Uh, do you think we'll see another Razor Crest? And if so, is that why Hasbro hasn't delivered it yet? They're delivering the Razor Crest. Those who did back that Hasbro lab, um, they're getting, I, I got a notification. Uh, it's, it's coming. It's coming soon. And already a few people have gotten theirs. Uh, at least one or two, because they're the ones that posted it on Instagram, so it must be real. Um, the N1 Starfighter is a lot of fun, but it's not very practical if you're going to keep being a bounty hunter. Unless you're going to cut people's heads off and just keep them in bags and put them into storage. 
Um, everybody's speculating that, yeah, that little, where the R2 unit should be going, the droid pit is going to be where Grogu's going to be. Certainly it's the right size for Grogu. Um, it's not very handy though to, to sort of, it's not a practical shit. It's like having, you know, having a family and then buying a sports car, a Lamborghini. It's just like, and you still have to do family stuff. How are you going to do that? It's not practical. So who knows? Maybe he'll have a garage. Maybe he'll have like a, a couple of ships that he'll use. So I think that'll be pretty interesting. But I, I would love to see another, if he's going to keep being a, a bounty hunter, he needs something a little bit more practical. There is speculation that they're going to swap ships, that Boba is going to get the N1 and Din Djarin's going to get uh, the fire spray. So... And uh, yeah, I did use the term fire spray instead of slave one. And I know for what I know, a lot of people really upset. Oh, it's the name of the ship. How could you change it from from slave one to fire spray? Well, I'm going to put it to you this way. One, it's a fake ship name. I mean, it's not a real ship, right? Fine. Two, that argument of keeping the name because it's always been called that, I find really weak. Because we know now, in this day and age, we are more enlightened. And you can call me a snowflake, you can call me woke, I don't care. The term slave isn't cool anymore. It's like the people who are complaining about the Cleveland Indians or the Washington Redskins and saying, we want to keep these racist names because they've always been part of our past. Be better. It's just, honestly, if we can, if we can do good, if we can pe make people not feel terrible about something or, or, or marginalized, if there was a team called the San Francisco Gooks, I'd be pissed. And the term gook comes from hanguk, which is what the American soldiers, they shortened the Korean, hanguk is what Korean people call themselves, hanguk sarum, but the American soldiers only heard gook, and then so they just called them the gooks. And then they went to Vietnam and then all of a sudden the Vietnamese became the gooks because all Asians are the same. But what I'm trying to say is we can be better. And honestly, it's the name of a fake spaceship. So if they want to call it the fire spray, it, no skin off of my back. Because as a fandom, we can be better. We can be better. And it's just like this, this gatekeeping, this whole like purist sort of thing doesn't hold, doesn't hold water for me. Because it's just like, you know... It's a, it's a name that can be really, that has a lot of connotations to it. Slavery, it's not a cool thing. Now, I think what would have been cool, how they could have addressed it in a really cool way instead of just trying to slip it under the cracks, is if they actually said, you know, Boba Fett had this huge speech where he talked about how, you know, I used to be a slave trader. I built my reputation on that. No more. My father, you know, I'm, he's seen what slavery is like because of the Tuscans. And so he renounces that and he renames it. I think that would be super wizard, super dope. Um, and who knows? That could still happen. We don't know. But at the end of the day, all I'm just trying to say is um, we need to relax about that kind of stuff. And, and I've stayed silent on it for the most part. But it's like slavery is not cool. It's never been cool. And so if we can change a ship, ship's name that was kind of like celebrated for that, I'm for it. So that, that's I'll get off my soapbox and I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. But I'm... I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I didn't mean to hijack this thread with that, but we got a super chat from Captain Wrecked again. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone from for for keeping uh, keep being amazing. I love this community, Paul. I still can't promise an RCA RCAF cargo plane to get your toys. <laughs> I, I'm going to start shipping it out. Canada Post is going to start hating me or loving me. I'm, I'm shipping all this stuff home, dribs and drabs at a time. So, and I'm sorry. Uh, Bitter Trolls asking, did I get to pick up and play with the Grogu uh, puppet? Uh, I actually did. Didn't play with him, but it was just like I got to hold him. And uh, it's beautiful. The, the hero version is beautiful. The silicone, the, the ears, that it, it's soft to the touch. It's weighted like a baby. The eyes are just alive. Uh, and the hair, like everything is just spectacular. And that's why I'm obsessed so I have so many Grogu's at home, Hot Toys, Sideshow, uh, the 1-6 scale, Black Series scale, the TVC, all these things. Um, he's one of my favorite characters just because he's so damn cute. So, um, Michael Kalba was asking, how was it like working with Bryce uh, on set? 
and again, the short time that I worked there, she was spectacular. And I would love to work with her again because this is, uh, she's the real deal. She's the real deal and a fantastic human being too. So that's, that's great. Um, one six shooters asking, what did I think of the armorer? I'll cast a replay, but what does the last episode, but does the last episode make you like it more? Yeah, absolutely. The hot toys armorer. Um, I will admit, uh, I initially took a pass on the first round, first run of it because I was like, mm, okay, she was there and yeah, she killed a bunch of stormtroopers and stuff, but I was kind of on the fences in terms of uh, which characters that I wanted. And uh, I will admit that, you know, I was, I was kind of like running out of hot toys, um, figures that I didn't already have at home that I wanted to unbox. And so like I, I put her on the list to order and then this episode came out and I was like, dude, all right, super cool. And uh, yeah, I love the mythos that the, that they're building uh, surrounding that character. And of course, Emily Swallow kills it as a character, as, as, as a performer in that. So um, yeah, as for the voice actor for it. And she's in the armor when she's not doing stunts too. So that's a cool thing. Um, something everybody must realize too is like, uh, for a lot of it, the, the actors are in when, when, when they need to speak, they're, they're performing when they can, which is great. But uh, when they have to do stunts, there's obviously a trained professional in that armor and they provide the, the ADR work for it. So, um, but uh, you know, for the Mandalorian, man, that's, that's like Brendan Wayne. He's in that, he's in that suit and that's John Wayne's grandson. And so you can't get any more old school Hollywood and Western than that. Right. And so, and Pedro Pascal crushes it doing the ADR work too. Right. So it, it takes a lot of what I'm trying to say. Is it takes a lot of people to bring these characters to life. So do that. I got a super chat from Tom, 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 Tom. Sorry. I just always say that we should have a beard off. If you can make it to Washington state for a con. Oh, challenge accepted. If I'm ever in Washington state for a con, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, go. Here's the other one. No one has ever called the Razor Crest by its name. If Din Djarin even gave it one, and yet no one seemed to complain about that either. That's a good point. That is a good point. He, he in fact, he calls it the Razor Crest. Uh, so it's okay to call a ship by its designation, apparently. Um, in the episode of The Mandalorian that I was in, he was, uh, I referred to the ship as Razor Crest M111. That's the designation. That is the, the serial number on that, on that ship. Razor Crest M111. And um, yeah, so there is that as well. John Stone, hi, love. Hi, love back. How are you? Uh, Devesh was asking, was I able to catch Spider Man in the theaters? Yes, just before everything locked lockdown, we did. And I loved it. My family loved it. It was great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to go through that, Cynthia. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, like, she, some young dude yelled, uh, I was like, hey, chink at me a few years ago. And honestly, I was shocked at somebody using that term in 2018. Like, wow. And that's that's the thing. It's just like, let's be better. Let's be better. And I understand people get frustrated in this and that. And I think racial slurs is the lowest, is the laziest form of self-expression that is out there. It is literally some person cannot think they are so mad or so upset that they cannot think of another insult, so they have to go with the blatantly obvious and, in a sense, to the most, what they think is the most hurtful thing. But it really makes them look quite ridiculous. It's like, wow, that's the best you could come up with, right? I think it's, it's, it's a product of a weak mind. And it's, that's the thing. If you want to insult me, if you really want to insult me, let's, like, put some effort into it, man. That's, like, lowest common denominator. It's so cheap. So... Uh, here we go. Not the super chat. You're, you're single-handedly. This episode has been sponsored by Captain Wrecked. Um, he's got one. If they swapped the Razor Crest was a class of ship. Din's had no name. Stands the reason they just call the ship Fire Spray if they swap. There you go. That works for me. Um... That's a good question, Luke. Is there any acknowledgement of Grant Imahara on the set of Mando or Boba? Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you because I haven't honestly spent that much time on set. 
Uh, I have one day on Book of Boba Fett. And season two of Mando, I can't remember if that was before or after Grant passed away. I think it was before Grant passed away. So I, I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't tell you. But I'm sure somewhere there would be a, a they're very good about those kinds of tributes. So I think that'd be great. Um, <laughs> shut up, Aaron. Paul's going to start shipping toys home. Anna's going to start playing porch parts. Shut up. I'm going to get, now you're going to cost me more because I have to put tracking and signing stuff on that. Not to insure them. Very sneaky. Uh, Kenny C3. Super chat. Thank you so much, my friend. In honor of the hair missing from your lip. Thank you. Uh, I had been shaving. I hadn't been shaving enough of it. They made it wider. They made it wider. And uh, when I was shaving, I was like, it was looking kind of like, I don't know if I'm shaving enough off, but better too little than too much, right? Because it's easier to fix if it's, if it's not clean enough. So there you go. Yay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Uh, I promised that we were going to do some giveaways, so we should get to that. But first, let me get the super chat from Bitter Troll. Uh, now, what is the name of Carson Tava's ship? Uh, it's the T-65 X-Wing? T-65B? I don't think he's gone so far as to name it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Captain Rack, you can tell me, do, do military pilots have names for the ships? I know they'll have the pilot's name on the ship or sometimes, like, I you know for bombers, they'll call them, they'll have names for them. Uh, but I think for fighters, they're just, they've just got their squadron designations, like Red One or, you know, Rogue Five or whatever. Uh, but I don't think they have actual names. So, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, here we go, Captain Rack. Uh, would you consider voicing a bad lip reading style cut video of the N1 versus X Wing scene if the script was decent and buy some more treats? Uh, you know, that's a slippery, it, it, that's interesting just because uh, bad lip reading, that would be, I don't know where that falls into in terms of licensing. And because now I am actually in the Star Wars universe, I don't know if I'm allowed, but I'd be allowed to do that. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's something I'd have to ask my agent for. But if it was fun, yeah. Uh. Yeah. There you go. Captain Wrecked saying, in terms of the naming of the ships, uh, it was mostly bombers with the pilot and crew chief's names on the sides. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what I have. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. That I would think. So, uh, did my wife just chime in on something? Here it is. I won't sign for it. I know you won't. I know, but you love me. You have to, cause you love me. And that's money spent already. And it, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, Colin Hollis. Does Captain Carson Tavis X-Wing have a mayonnaise dispenser? Cheeky. Very, very cheeky. <laughs> uh, and see, I have a lot of friends who are here, right here. If I don't want to sign up the packages, you can send them to me, Paul, at care of SWE Baylord. Right on. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get to this giveaway. My wife has texted me and she says, get to the giveaway. It is uh, 5.50. Oh, it's almost 9 o'clock oh, uh, back east. So let's do that. Okay. Uh, again, we're going to do this giveaway here. It is for uh, right here. Uh, one of four uh, Star Wars character encyclopedias. Uh, uh, my character is in this on page 62. I will autograph that page and personalize it and send it out to you. Once again, this is going to be uh, for members only. So you gotta be a member to enter this in. If you're not a member, it's okay. We're gonna do, we're gonna be doing another giveaway that's gonna be open for, for everybody as well. Uh, and I, you know, it's just, it's, it's a perk of membership. And so 
uh, I want to respect that relationship as well. And uh, they have done so much to help support this channel again. Uh, I will be autographing Cassian Andor's, I'm just kidding, uh, the Carson Teva page. And so we, we will do this for you guys, okay? But first and foremost, this is what you got to get ready. Uh, we have some trivia for you. You're going to have to answer this question. And for those eagle-eyed viewers, eagle-eyed, nothing can be easy. For the eagle-eared viewers uh, out there, this is, and this is for members only, you need to answer this question. I will type in the word go. Once go appears in the chat, you need to answer these. You need to answer this question, and the first member that answers the question correctly will get themselves a signed Star Wars character encyclopedia. Thanks to Yoko McCann and her friend at uh, Penguin for sending them to me. Uh, so, can ear eagles really hear that well? Tommy, you've been banned. Shut up, Tommy. Everybody, take a drink. But get ready. Here's the question. And those of you, it's already been mentioned. In season two of The Mandalorian, Captain Carson Tava refers to the Razor Crest as its designation. Can anybody remember what the designation is? Razor Crest, something, something, something. Are you ready? Get set. Oh, so close, Captain Wrecked. So close. It's not N. So close. Whoa. <laughs> wow, everybody, this is all my thing. <laughs> Tell me you're way off. Uh, again, remember, you have to be a member of this channel to do it. And uh, I'm just going to do a quick confirmation because I do have somebody who is here. Um, again, you have to be a member, of, not a subscriber, a member of the channel. Uh, and I'm looking right now, I have, just need to look this up. Uh, so if you're not a member, you're not eligible for this draw. So please, please keep that in mind uh, because I see. I've got Luke Gervais right now with the first correct answer on the board. Luke, are you a member? Let's take a look because if you're not, I have to, I'm just going to go down the next list. And remember, I'm going off the, uh, I'm going off my Ecamm uh, thing and I'm looking for Luke's name in the members list. Um, oh no, I don't, are you a member, Luke? Oops, let's retry this. No, he's not. Oh, I'm sorry, Luke. Okay, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna be going down that list, so it's not Luke. Uh, sorry, Aaron, you're so close. No, Bad Wolf Media. Mike is the first one here. Bad Wolf Media. M one eleven is the first one here. M one eleven, not N. It is M. Some close ones. Um, Captain Rack, you were right there with it with the thing. Uh, and and yeah, it, I'm, I'm so. This is this is awesome. Uh, some great Luke. You can, but at the time of the drawing, you need to be a member. So I'm just going to. Um, yeah, you. you I, I'm sorry. It, it is. It, it is something you got. You, you answered it quickly, but unfortunately, you did not qualify for the membership. Uh, but you know what? What I'm going to do, Luke, uh, as a bit of a consolation for that to you there, uh, I will be sending you an autograph copy of this. Um, so. What I will do is, if you become a member too, uh, uh, I'll, I will contact you and we'll get get one of these to you. We're gonna write your name down, Luke, so I don't forget it. Where is it? Oh, while I'm up here, I might as well get a drink. I have to refill myself. I'm gonna write your name down, Luke, because I want to make sure that. Here we go. Luke. Okay, so and as a reminder again for everybody, you gotta be a member. You gotta be a member. Uh, okay. And so we got Bad Wolf Media. Mike wins, gets the uh, encyclopedia.
Okay. <laughs> oh, Matthew, that's okay. Uh, for those of you who want to sign up on the membership, if you go onto the uh, the my YouTube homepage, Bitter Asian Dude Inc., there is uh, there should be across the top, and you got to do this on your lap shot, on laptop. For whatever reason, if you're on an iOS device or mobile device, they won't let you sign up for a membership. So you got to be on like a, a laptop or a desktop computer. If you go to the uh, main page, there is a tab uh, up at the top under the banner called join. You can join there and it gives you an option to sign up as a uh, either a lieutenant or a commander, two different levels and two different types of access that you have there. But uh, yeah, so that's that's basically how you do it. Um, but again, uh, this is this is for the members. Some of these giveaways you don't you don't need to join. I, I appreciate it if you do join. You do get extra perks, which is something that I'm I'm really trying to uh, stress right there. And you don't have to. You can try it for a month. If you don't like it, you can always uh, not renew. Or you can just just sort of uh, withdraw your membership, which is cool. So it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, Joe, it's okay. We, we, we'll, we'll get to, we'll do some, why don't we do some Kim's convenience trivia then? Should we do some Kim's convenience trivia? <laughs> we can do that too. Uh, that'd be fun. Let's do another giveaway. Let's do another giveaway then. Uh, let's do another giveaway for, again, this is a character encyclopedia. I will be signing the Carson Teva page uh, and I can sign the inside of the book as well on the inside cover. Uh, I can draw mustaches on a bunch of the different characters like those without mustaches, Jin or so. I could give her a mustache. I could sign whatever page on here or maybe I'll sign a random page. And you don't know, but <laughs> we'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll do the second one. Is everybody ready for this, for the second one? <laughs> you see. Okay, let's get ready for the second one. And again, here we go. You have to be a member of the channel. Not, I'm going to join. You have to be an actual member right now. And um, yeah, I, I, honestly, Val, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. I'm going to write a random number down here. This is for members only. This is for members only. Uh, and oh my God, this, how is that going to work? Cause I have to read through everybody's, everybody's guess. And then I have to, ah, may, th I'll, I'll do that on a, on a, on a members only. Uh, I'll do that on a members only zoom because that, that would be, I think that would be fun. Like I'm thinking of a number between one and a hundred, right? Whoever gets closest wins. Uh, that would be fun, but it's a little bit too hard to sort of get, get to, um, Okay. Uh, oh my God. My, my questions. My questions. Okay. So, uh, oh, this is an easy one. Here's a, here's a gimme. Are you ready? I'm going to type the word go and members only. If you can answer this question, then uh, first one to answer this question after I type in the word go, if you're a member, you win an autograph copy of, uh, of the Star Wars character encyclopedia. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Lieutenant Reed, played by Max Floyd Jones, is from what city? Lieutenant Reed, who plays, who is played by Max Floyd Jones, is from what city? Off Life Zone 21 just became a member. There you go. Justin, Canada is not a city. Uh, I've got Steve three, shit spackled Muppet fart. Uh, it's got the correct answer. He's from North Vancouver. He got it first. Very good, very good, Steve. You get an encyclopedia too. Signed encyclopedia. Great. Okay. I'm gonna open up. I'm going to change the pace. We're going to open this up to everybody. Everybody now. Signed. I will sign this. Personalized. Come on, focus. I will sign this card 
for you and send it out. This is an unsigned Topps card. I will sign this. This is open to anybody watching tonight, right now. Uh, when I type in, after I type in the word go, <laughs> got to, you can answer this, okay? Um, get everybody ready and all, all worked up. My wife is texting me. What is she texting me? She is saying, shut up. That wasn't a Kim's trivia. No, I, I, I'm going to do a Kim's trivia right now. I will do Kim's trivia right now. And I'll do another Kim's trivia for another encyclopedia thing, okay? But for right now, for the card, let's do a... a it's a gimme. It's a gimme. In Kim's convenience, the Kims have two kids. What are their names? And who is oldest? In Kim's convenience, the Kims have two kids. What are the names and who's oldest? First one to answer. And this is open to anybody. Wow. <laughs> it just exploded. Hold on. Hold on. Chia of Steel. I'm going to give one to Chia of Steel. Not surprised. You got it. I'm going to send one over to Captain Crispy. You got one. Brian Schoenfeld. Bearded builds. There you go. So we got, I gave four, four away on that one. So we have Chi of Steel, Captain Crispy, Brian Schoenfeld, Bearded Builds. Y'all get cards, signed cards. And uh, I'll get in touch with you about this. Um, and again, what I'll do is, uh, yeah, this is, we will get in touch for these. Uh, so close. So many answers. This is great. Luke, if you want to become a member again, uh, you go to the YouTube channel, Bitter Asian Dude Inc., uh, and on that channel, under the under the uh, the main, um, there's a, a logo. There should be three buttons. One should say join. I click on that, and you should get your you should get the options there. If not, there's also a membership uh, tab where you can click on memberships, and you you have the, the the options to join there. If I if I remember correctly, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> got a super chat from Captain Racked. Congrats all, buy merch and tell your friends. Thank you so much. Thank you, that's great. Okay, we got another, uh, we've given away two encyclopedias. I got one, we, let's do another encyclopedia. We got another one out here and this will be a Kim's Convenience trivia question as well. Um, and uh, this one will be, uh, this one is, I'm, I'm going to switch back. You got to be a member for this one. Um, for, so uh, it'll be a Kim's Convenience question. Uh, again, this is for members only to qualify. And uh, Steve, that's so generous of you. Steve3 is saying I can re-gift the encyclopedia. Uh, but it's like you're being... Um, <laughs> that's, that's really nice of you to flip it back. So... Uh, we can do that as well. We can do that. That's generous. Again, C3, super generous dude, uh, my brother uh, in the 501st Legion, but also my brother in Vancouver who's helped me out so much and he's such a great guy. Anyways, um, here we go. Uh, this is this is for another character, Star Wars character encyclopedia. You're going to have to answer Kim's convenience question. And um, 
Let me see. Uh, okay. After I type in the word go, first member to answer this question correctly, Kim's Convenience Trivia, will we'll get a signed copy of this character encyclopedia from yours truly. Uh, okay. In season five of Kim's Convenience, what is the name of the pet spider that Nyong brings to the Kims? What is the name of the pet spider that Nyong brings to the Kims? Whoa. I get it. and I'm going from this I'm going from the chats on my on my thing. And it's Mr. Colin Hollis with the quick fingers. Spider. That is correct. His name is Spider. So I will do this over and I'll say Colin Hollis. Spider. Alright. Okay. at that it's oops oops this is look at that look what I've done look what I've done not weird uh okay let's go down so many people have answered this is this is really great um and again for those of you here you go we get, I've been giving away these Star Wars character encyclopedias provided to me by my friend Yoko McCann through her friend uh contact over at Penguin uh my character, Carson Teva, is in there, and uh, I will be autographing uh, that page for, uh, for another lucky member, again, who's answering a trivia question. Uh, let's go back to Star Wars, if that's cool. Uh, let's go back to Star Wars. Um, and the question here is, once after I type in go, right, and this is, again, for members only, right, uh, what is the designation of Boba Fett's ship? What is the designation of Boba Fett's ship? Not the name, the designation. Daniel Sertle. Daniel. with the encyclopedia. Yes, the designation is a fire spray. Congratulations. There you go. I think we have one more. Let's do a round of cards. Let's do a round of cards. This is open for everybody, not just members. <laughs> Ocean spray. I should get, you know what? Let me get you a card just for that. Okay, so here is ah, Tops cards, Tops cards, autograph card, Carson, Captain Carson Teva, New Republic. Okay, of the New Republic. Um, what's a good Star Wars question? Uh, you can be anybody, anybody. After I type the word go, answer the question, and uh, and you will, you will get a signed copy of this Carson Tava card. And this is open to anybody, uh, all subscribers. Um, let me see. Let's see if I can glean something from from this. I know my wife is saying, "Why didn't you have questions done in advance?" And it's like I did. But uh, <clears throat> already, and I already used that one. I already used that question. Uh, we've done this before, so people should know this. That's a great question. That's a great one. 
this this is a bit, a bit of a deep cut. And so, yeah. Uh, so that that's a fun one. That's a fun one. Um, uh, so in Star Wars, uh, in, in The Mandalorian, uh, so far we've been introduced to a number of pilots, right? There are, there's, name the three pilots that appeared, three New Republic pilots that appeared in uh, season one, season one of The Mandalorian. I want the names of the three New Republic pilots we're first introduced to in season one of The Mandalorian. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Nope, I'm not in season one, De Devesh. Sean D, nice try. Travel Wolf and two others. It's gotta be season one. I was not in season one. I'm looking for three pilots' names. Yeah, the three. Captain White Claw. Very close, but not quite Raymond Tentis. Joe! You got it! Joe Chufu gets one. Keep going. So you got Joe. <laughs> no, Anna, it's not Larry Curley and Moe. Hip Optimus Prime. This should have been a book question. That's, that's true enough. Tom, 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 Tom. We got Melissa K. Ed Loss 2000. Get one more. Fly Zone 21. All right, congratulations to one, two, three, four, five, five of you who got the cards. Good job, everyone. Great job. Great job with that. Okay, uh, and we have... Hey, hey, Terry's in the house. Panda Props and Costumes, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you on this channel. Terry, everybody, people who, who remember, uh, Terry was a guest on uh, The Geek Shall Inherit the Earth. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, he's a props maker, extraordinaire, fantastic human being as well. Part of the Buckethead's, uh, crew, uh, in terms of helping to do the, the production on that, uh, with, with fantastic prop building and armor building and whatnot. Uh, he's great. Uh, welcome to the channel. That was cool. Okay. <laughs> Reading all these comments. This is great. Okay. So we got one more. Character Encyclopedia left. This is for members only. Members only. This is for the one if I had. Here we go. When I after I type go. Again, this is for members only. Oops. For members only. For character encyclopedia, which is great. Um I'm trying to think of a good one. I'm trying to think of a good one. One that, that people got work for. And unfortunately, I kind of, I think I used that one up with this season one uh, thing. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Clancy Brown, the actor Clancy Brown, appeared in season one of The Mandalorian. What race did he play? Clancy Brown, the actor, appeared in season one of The Mandalorian. What was his species? And again, you got to be a member. You got to be a member. Here we go. Captain Wrecked. Boom. Right away. Deveronian. Nailed it. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations, my friend. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Mr. Krabs, 
That's very funny, Luke. That's a good one. <laughs> no, you don't suck, Anton. Don't worry. There's going to be plenty of other giveaways. Um, I got. I, I keep saying this every week. There's exciting. There, there's really cool stuff coming up, and I'm hoping to do a little bit more giveaways in terms of just uh, membership interactions and whatnot. So you know, it, it's there's going to be a lot of fun here. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that uh, that participated. We have uh, Luke. I'm going to get you a card. Don't worry. I'm going to send you a card. Uh, we have for the. For the encyclopedia, Colin Hollis, you got it. Uh, Bad Wolf Media. Oh, I got a mic. I got a. I, I did the encyclopedia. I, I did the your, your uh, abbreviation. I was like, who the heck is Bum? My W looked like a U, but Black uh, Bad Wolf Media. You got one, Mike. Uh, Colin Hollis, congratulations for the encyclopedia. You're gonna get and Captain Racked, of course. You're all gonna get signed encyclopedias. Uh, for the winners of the cards, we have Chi of Steel, Captain Crispy, Brian Schoenfeld, and Bearded Builds. You're all going to get cards as well as Joe Chufuk, uh, Tom, 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 uh, Melissa K, Ed Lost 2000, and uh, Flyzone 21. You're all going to get cards. Uh, I'm going to need mailing addresses from all of you. So if you head on over to the community, uh, community tab uh, on this website page, uh, I'm going to drop down the Bitter Asian Dude. Uh, or you can email me, bitteragendude.com at gmail. Uh, sorry, bitteragendude at gmail.com. I haven't been drinking. You've been drinking. Bitteragendude at gmail.com. Uh, send me your mailing address, and uh, I'll get these shipped out to you ASAP once I've signed them, which is great. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, what time is it? What time is it? 624 here so it's 924 out there yes roman i'm not you are you uh yes congratulations to all the wieners hip optimus prime i still love saying that i still love that i hope you're well nigel i hope you're doing well um all right uh brian oh my buddy brian is he's in the house yes oh did i miss i missed a super chat from bearded builds see this is why my wife thank you uh, hey, thank you. Thank you, Paul, for being awesome. You're an amazing person, and I love your vibe. The world needs more people like you, my brother. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that. That means a lot. Uh, and I love your avatar. I love that. Looks like me, without skin and muscles, but with my beard. That's very cool. Thank you so much for that generous super chat. I, I love that. Um, have I opened anything yet, Adam? No, I have not. Well, yes, I have. Uh, you missed out on the hot toys. Exclusive, uh, one six scale, the armor from Mandalorian season one. Um, she had some really spectacular uh, accessories, the hammer, uh, the tongs, uh, the, the pouring ladle, Beskar, uh, different hand grips, obviously. And uh, she had the little arc welding torch, um, uh, real fur, the real fur sort of like a, a shawl, shawl, you know, like the cape. Uh, real leather um, skirt and stuff, and the coverings on the boots were spectacular. Um, single jointed elbows, though, which was interesting. Single jointed, uh, and they're ratcheted joints, so it's like click, click, click to get them in position. I, I kind of wish the knees were double, double jointed, so so you could get her into that meditative pose where she's got the the two um, her two implements there. But it, a spectacular figure. Um, I, I, you know, just going to, if everybody's cool with it, maybe I could go into this. Louis, I will, do not worry, my friend. You're going to, you're going to, we're going to have some more giveaways. Uh, have a good night. We'll see you soon. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, Sean P, you, that was a, you know, great comeback from the Leafs. Last night's game, I was able to catch the third period, the best period, where they had five unanswered goals to get there uh, to, to beat Detroit. Did they deserve to win? Not the way they played the first two periods, but they did come out with the win. And after blowing so many leads, it was nice to see them come back. Sorry, sports ball talk. Um, Robert with the super chat. Oh, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, from Tall Boys to Book of Boba Fett to right here. Thank you for all the entertainment this week. Paul, here's to Detective Tava series. <laughs> Thanks. 
Thanks so much, my friend. Good night, Gary. Good night. You're leaving? I didn't know you were here, dude. Uh, I, I still have, if people are cool, I can, I can do a quick review of, because uh, a comparison of this arc reactor or, and or, and or. Uh, this can of White Claw, no. Uh, I also have this third party arc reactor. Um, and compared to the Hero Collector, I can, I can totally do that. I can totally do that. I had Nikki Dave, Nic Nicole Davis like, no, do it. Let's do it. Good night, Gary. Okay, Captain Rex said yes, so let's do it. All right. So right off the bat, first of all, and thank you so much, Robert, for that. Uh, I don't ever want to feel like it's just like uh, that I expect it, and I am very grateful for it. I think I'm really overwhelmed whenever uh, people do super chats for this channel. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's great, but weird at the same time, uh, because it's just, I, I do this because I love it and I know you're donating because you love it too. And so I, I really appreciate that. So I, I just want to make sure that you know, that all of you know that I, I really, really do, uh, truly, uh, I'm humbled by that. So thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, uh, what flavor of White Claw? Um, I had a mango and now I'm drinking grapefruit grapefruit um so hero collector it's beautiful it's beautiful uh sculpt is great no metal on it wish it for the price point because uh this is 100 bucks canadian so two dollars american just kidding uh 100 uh canadian for this it looks great there's no metal it's all resin heavy plastic um but it doesn't light up does not light up. So for that much, I would expect it to at least light up. That's a given, that's a slam dunk. You can have an arc reactor, it's gotta light up. It's got to, for that much, it's got to. If it's just this cast, $40, I think is fair. 50, pushing it. But for $100, this has to light up. Uh, I like heroes collector, hero collectors. Uh, it's a branch of Eagle Moss. I love Eagle Moss. Their starships are, Amer uh, are American, are amazing. Americans are amazing. Um, they, I have almost all the BSG ships that they do. The, the starships they have from Star Trek are spectacular. The Eagles from Space, Team, Space 1999, I love. And they're about, you know, anywhere from 75 to to $100. And I like them because the detail is fantastic. And I and don't expect them to light up. But like for, for ships like that, I'm cool with. For this, and I'm not, like, I like Marvel. I like superheroes. I'm not crazy about them. But I saw this and I was like, ooh, I got to have this. I got to have this. And I was pretty disappointed that uh, it didn't light up. So there was that. So out of spite, it was. this is one of the whole, come on, man. I knew that there was something better out there. So I went out and out of spite, I went uh, and I... Uh, went on Amazon actually, and I saw there was an arc reactor for sale, it's $130. So for $30 more, I was very curious as to, okay, what are you gonna get? Now this isn't, it's not officially licensed. And I'm not saying get an unlicensed stuff, but uh, I just wanna show you like what is out there if you are a replica collector or a rebuilder or, or whatever, uh, what is available out there? Here you go, uh, Captain Wrecked, Super Chat, $2, thank you. Were you ever into Thunderbirds? Love the models. I was, and I think that was the gateway for me to get into um, Space 1999. You know, same same comp same same dude that that produced them. Uh, so that's the thing. So it comes in this box here, um, and this is a conversation to have later on about licensed versus unlicensed stuff and third party stuff. Uh, so because I it's. As a collector myself, I'm starting to become a little bit more like, oh, oh, okay. Um, I didn't realize how complex it can be. So, but this is on Amazon, which is like pretty legit website. Anyways, uh, and it was available for sale. So I was like, okay, so it's, I don't think it's illegal, but that's a conversation to be had. Uh, comes in a box marked, of course, from Pepper, from Pepper Pops, right? Uh, which is cool. So it already right there just kind of feels a little bit more legit, just from that one really simple, simple thing. And so let's, let's up. 
and we're gonna slip it under here. So it comes in this massive bit of foam, foam packaging, right? Uh, so it's protected. It's really, really cool. Don't care about the shipper box. Uh, and then we have, just get this here, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, and, uh, oh, so you're doing some, something a bit dodgy, are you? Shut up, Boba. Okay, this is, I'm making a point. This is a, a review out of spite. Okay, so this, this is what we're doing. All right. Uh, let's open this up here. And it comes, like, out of the bat, it's got, it's an acrylic case. Mm. Oh, so, got a base, a base to the case, base to the case, right there, and uh, this acrylic case. This the name of the, the name of the company. It's a one-to-one -one scale reactor model. Is it's got the installation instructions on it. Great, uh, beautiful acrylic case that just fits right there. And when you open this up. Okay, so right off the bat here, um, you've got a base here, and that's, this is metal. There's metal. Metal, we have metal, right? This is metal. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a plastic that looks, no, this is a metal plating on top of uh, a resin or a plastic right there. And this would, I would imagine, sort of sits here in the display, right? And I think I could open that up and unscrews. Yeah, no instructions really, but I could, I figured it out. And that would. My guy. Anyways, that will go there. Well, I'll do that later. Let's get to the money. Money shot here. This is the arc reactor that you get. Here it is. Right? And it's the detail here already is um, is is great. Like these these uh, copper cables. Again, this is all plastic as well. But it feels, this is heavier, and they have these added, right? Like, it looks like an XLR cable. It just looks a little bit more like an actual, right, props. Like, it, it was actually there. And I think, oh, does that work? There was something where it was, it clicked. Oh, I got to plug it in. Dummy. Dummy. You big dummy. Here it is. Cable, USB cable, plugs in, right? It's not a 3D print. This is something that is, here we go. Plug in, it's got an AC outlet. It's a USB power source, right? And I'm going to plug it into this right here and I think well what I should have done is pop it in here like that put it in this but you know what this for shits and giggles I'm just gonna plug this in and there you go Oh my God, what happened? 
Did I unplug my camera? Oh my gosh. Did I unplug, I unplugged the wrong thing. Okay, I don't know what happened here, but this is, this is my FaceTime camera now. I lost, I unplugged something wrong. Uh, and uh, this is weird. <laughs> See, this is, this is punishment for not, not getting this. Yeah, this is a Godzilla background. This is really weird. I unplugged, what did I unplug? I unplugged what I thought was That is so weird that that happened. That camera is still, that's really weird. Let me just look at something here. Poly 6400, I'm going to. Set my camera to. To this, no, that's not it. Why did that? Did I burn out this? Well, this is, uh, I, I think my, uh, what happened was my hub, my uh, um, USB hub, I, I might have burned it out somehow. Uh, so the only way to fix it is to yeah, and that's right, that's what I get. That's what I get for buying third party. Uh, what ended up happening was I think just the, my USB hub, uh, I overloaded it somehow by plugging in a power source to a USB connector. So um, anyways, I'm gonna show you this right now. Uh, I wonder if the power actually works on this. It's, it's not, yeah, I think I shorted it. I shorted it. Let me see if I can. Well, I've already done that, but might as well just plug it in then. Go! It, it lights up. Right, and I think what happened was, yeah, audio jacked. Oh. <laughs> this is, can anybody hear me? Can people hear me? I don't know if people can hear me. I have no idea what's going on. Um, good Lord. It, okay, so you can hear me. You can hear me now. Um, God. Yeah, so I overloaded my USB hub and I blew some connections out. Um, and yeah, I maybe, maybe that's less. This is what you get for third for getting a third party thing. I overloaded it. It is a USB jack uh, power supply. And in fact, if I was smarter, I have a plug right behind me. And really what I should have done is this instead. There you go. So there's that, and it's it's sound activated. So if you clap, it pulses, right? Flickers, turns off. So I clap on, clap off. It does all of this basically. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, the fact that it is sound sensitive, you can you know, change the, the, the different modes. It pulsates, it comes in an in acrylic case. Um, it overloads your USB hubs, but this is uh, something 
yeah, totally the EMP from that. Uh, I got a super chat from, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. Uh, thank you, Captain Rex. It was totally the EMP from firing up the arc reactor. Yeah, I should have been a little bit smarter with that. Um, but this is, you know, hey, it's gotta be, it's not a fun boxing Sunday unless something weird like this happens, right? So, and again, this was, is it gonna blow up? Here we go. This is something that, uh, it's a third party seller on Amazon, it's $30 more. Uh, the uh, actual casing itself, it's metal. It's metal, so that's, there is that, so already, and so for $30 more, you get something that just, it looks more like the prop, um, the, the actual prop itself, uh, it has light, sound, no sound, but it's sound sensitive, which is cool. It comes in an acrylic case, um, and uh, yeah, so you can you can mount it through here. I can't really do that right now because of these cables, but and uh, yeah, it, it looks great in the acrylic case. So there's that. Uh, and again, this is that is a uh, that's that's something that's um, you know buying something unlicensed is somebody's making. I mean, that's that's. So you're making money off of something that they don't have a license to. But I mean, that's kind of, if you look at it, that's that's a gray area. Uh, Star Wars, for example, a lot of people that build the Stormtrooper armor, I know 501st, um, for example, they the thing is they, they can't profit from it. They don't use that armor for profit. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's kind of this gray area. I'm learning more and more about that. It's an individual choice from different, uh, for different builders and makers and stuff like that. So there's that. Um, Okay, look, I didn't almost burn down a hotel in Winnipeg once. Uh, I was cooking, I was cooking chicken wings for the cast. It was St. Patrick's Day. We finished the show, we were celebrating. I was cooking chicken wings and uh, it, they were being cooked in butter basically. And the, the pan warped and then it spilled out, the hot butter spilled out onto the element in the, in the, uh, in the oven and it started to burn. And so smoke was coming out. It was just burning butter. And it was in the apartment. We, were open, we opened a window to, to ventilate to the outside air. And somebody said, open the front door and the, the air from the hallway will push it out. Well, it did the exact opposite. When they opened the front door, the air from the outside pushed all the smoke into the hallway. I was on the 14th floor and it set off the fire alarm for the building. And uh, five fire trucks showed up um it was bad i had to take that elevator ride of shame down uh to explain there's no fire uh it was burning butter and it blew into the hallway and it set off the fire alarm so uh i had to take that ride of shame up back to the unit with my uh uh with all the firefighters uh i felt really bad about it i didn't pull the fire alarm it just went off because of the smoke they had to visually inspect the unit to make sure it was fine uh and uh i think some of the cast were, were singing kumbaya so yeah anyways because of me they have warnings at the fort gary in winnipeg i'm very sorry and i felt bad for everybody else who is there and yes yes kevin somebody did say butter <laughs> so that was that uh <laughs> I'm gonna hold off because I, I lost my overhead cam. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on this. Uh, I will do uh, uh, I will do a, a better video comparing the three later on. Um, but this is a Hot Toys, and it has mag it's got magnets. It's magnetic, and it has a light up function to it too. So I'm really super pumped about that. And of course, you get Hot Toys quality from it uh, with Hot Toy prices, of course. But this is still in the same range. Uh, this is available on sideshow.com. Uh, they have it on there. I think it was $120, $125. So, like, okay, yeah. $125 American, which I think is like $3,000 Canadian. Just kidding. But uh, anyways, <laughs> there's that. Uh, okay, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta do some troubleshooting. I think that's the, the Cosmos way of saying, hey, your live stream was too long. Get off the air. Uh, so many, 
so many butter references. Uh, yeah, I think this is uh, this will be interesting. I should have thought out the power requirements better. I got a super chat. One more from my friend Captain Wrecked. Thank you so much. If you haven't set a Winnipeg hotel on fire, are you even Canadian? What is what is money? What is a money is no object bucket list? Oh, Star Wars prop that you want? Uh, R two unit. I'm gonna say that right there. Yeah, an R two unit. I would love like and one of those Cadillac aluminum builds. R two unit. Yeah, I would love one of those. Um, and thank you so much for that. And, uh, oh, Terry's just joining us. Terry, <laughs> you missed me blowing out my uh, USB hub and disconnecting all of my devices uh, from trying to plug in the third party arc reactor <laughs> into a wall, in, in, into, the, into anyways, long story short. But uh, hey, everybody, if, uh, um, again, if you liked what you saw here, just wait till, uh, Again, uh, Fridays, Book of Boba Fett. Uh, we do a recap show. It's Yoko McCann, uh, Kevin Wong, myself, and Ernie, the Falling Fett. Uh, we do recap. Episode 6 of Book of Boba Fett is on this Wednesday, Disney+. Plus. Check it out. Check out our stream afterwards. On the, uh, uh, Yoko also has her Midnight 30 crew uh, after the episode drops, uh, just past midnight. Uh, she's got a great live stream on her Twitch channel. Live in La Vida Yoko, check that out. That's a lot of fun. I was on it the last couple of weeks. It's been great. Um, yeah, everybody come on over, say hi. We've all seen it. Uh, I, I love seeing all of you um, on Kevin's uh, chat sites. It's great, a lot of familiar friends. And so it's great because we're sharing, we're sharing uh, communities which is really, really nice and building one super nerd community. So I really appreciate that, um, all of your support. And uh, let me see. Yeah, big shout outs, big shout outs to Captain Wrecked and for Robert and for everybody who who um, supported this channel and like with, with all the generous, very generous donations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay safe, uh, get vaccinated, get your booster. Uh, I caught COVID, I did everything, I thought I did everything right. I masked up, I stayed, you know, I distanced, I stopped touching my face, I stopped licking people's faces. But, uh, and I still caught COVID. And I'm convinced that uh, the reason why my symptoms, luckily, were so minor and slight were because I, I, I had that vax. So take care of yourselves because Honestly, I love spending time with you and, and I love having you around. So let's keep that up. Remember, this community is for all of us. Let's build each other up, support each other, stay positive, and uh, we will see you on Friday, or well, Wednesday on Yoko's live stream, Friday on Kevin's live stream, on Toying Around, his YouTube channel, which is fantastic. And we'll see you next Sunday for a fantastic edition. So um, yeah, good night and have a great week. Take care, everyone. Still don't know why the USB hub failed and the little mini bulb up. <sighs> Nothing can be easy. Nothing. Shut up, little boba. See you.